Orange Sky Audio presents Dusk Bitten, City Wolves Book Two by Millie Taden. Narrated for you by Elizabeth Russell and Nick J. Russo. For book lovers everywhere, thank you for reading. About the Book Wolf Shifter and loner Navy Amana doesn't want much out of life. A few good books and a quiet place to read to his heart's content. When his family sends him on business to San Diego, Navy isn't pleased. But a chance meeting with his dream woman changes everything. Karina Sai is furious that her father is selling their family business. She seeks solace in her beloved bookstore only to meet the most intriguing man ever. After an incredible day and night with Navy, her luck seems to change for the better. But, of course, things aren't that simple. Navy and Karina might be fated mates, but their connection is severed by misunderstandings and family jealousy. Someone is out to stop their happily ever after before it can even begin. Chapter 1 Navy Navy Amana was sure of three things. First, he hated his older brother for sending him to San Diego. Second, he really didn't want to be in this city. Third, he really wanted to be in his own apartment back in New York City, probably in his study, sitting in his favorite leather armchair with a tumbler of bourbon and a good book in his lap. There was little he could do about all that now. He was actually in San Diego, far away from his study and his brother. There was little for him to do but to enjoy his glass of bourbon and pretend the rest. But, of course, the bar was all wrong for really sinking into the novel he was trying to finish. The music was too chipper, the surrounding conversations too loud, and the sun just a bit too bright. Shit, even the people around him were too happy for him. He had to be the only asshole in the world who would complain about San Diego being too sunny and too beautiful. Other people would have loved to be there, but not him. If the whole lone wolf was an actual thing, Navy was the one it would be based on. People made him nervous. Always had. Maybe it was growing up in such a blusterous family that made him so averse to loud noises. Maybe it was his shifter senses. Though, if that were true, his family would be just as affected as him, wouldn't they? Navy toyed with the knot of his tie, suddenly feeling like the damn thing was suffocating him. If he was honest with himself, Navy could admit that he felt like an outsider in his family. Hell, in his very life. Banks was the golden boy of the family, the one mom and dad placed all their faith to run the family business. Jewel was a constant presence, solid as the base of a tree. She was a wonderful mother, too, even if her growing brood made her a little bit of a scatterbrain. Then there was Ivor. The baby of the family was quintessentially the bad boy. The entire Amana pack fawned over his younger brother, whether because of his fun ideas or because he was doing something exasperating. Navy tried to think what he brought to the fold and came up empty. Unless it was being quiet and shy and preferring the silence of his condo to read, there wasn't much he could do probably because there wasn't much he wanted to do within the Amana Industries conglomerate. Navy shuffled on the high stool of his seat as his dream, his very secret wish, whispered in his heart. He shut it down and locked it tightly. So tight, in fact, his wolf roared to life with a growl. If you didn't try to be something you're not, life would be a hell of a lot easier for both of us. You can't be the business head like Banks. You can't be the absolute fuck toy that Ivor is. You can only be yourself. Now stop moping and find us someplace to shift. Who knows? Maybe while we're out of the hotel, we'll spot some place where we can... Excuse me. Navy waved over the bartender to interrupt his wolf. It would be so much fucking easier to keep his secret wish actually secret if he didn't share his head with a wolf. I heard that the animal huffed out haughtily. You would, Navy barked back, since you're in my head. 
So, yeah, maybe Navy was a jerk for not wanting to be in San Diego, but at least he could admit why the city's charms were lost on him. He just preferred to be with his own things, in his own space. And to think that in the morning, he had to make his way to a family-owned business and finalize a merger. Navy could only hope that it was a smooth transition, that everyone in the company wanted to sell. He'd been to a few mergers with Banks and his father where the transition was less than friendly. He didn't know how to convince people to do his bidding. That was more Banks style. Maybe even Ivers, too. Navy wasn't that much of an oddball. Other people were also very much threatened by the idea of change, and nothing screamed change like a bigger umbrella company sucking up all the other smaller businesses on this side of the ocean. What can I get you, handsome? The bartender, a young woman who smelled too strongly of booze and perfume, batted her eyelashes at him. He had been considering another drink, but now that the bartender was eyeing him like that last ice cream cone, Navy knew he had to change venues. He asked for the bill and paid before heading back to the reception desk. You'd think that a luxury hotel such as this would be ready to accommodate his schedule change, but no such luck. Navy had hopped off the plane, made his way to the hotel only a few hours before he was set to check in. The penthouse suite wasn't ready. That gave him another reason why he knew he should never leave his beloved New York. His condo was always clean and always ready for him. Not having a place of his own made his skin itch and crawl. Even his wolf agreed that it was uncomfortable to be so far away from his roots. If Banks was known to be grumpy around chaos, Navy knew that change was his grumpy button. At least the receptionist announced that the suite was finally ready for him. She apologized profusely before offering to take him up to his room herself. Navy frowned as he assured her that he could very well ride an elevator to the top floor all by himself. The woman seemed disappointed, and Navy couldn't understand why. It bugged him all the way up to the penthouse, where his luggage was waiting for him. The room smelled strongly of cleaning products, too much for his shifter nose. He walked to the patio door and threw it open. Of course, the room had a view of the beach. The water, a crisp blue, was quite pretty, but the crowd of people assembled there basically guaranteed that Navy wouldn't be going to explore. If Banks were here, he'd go on and on about how Navy wouldn't be able to find his mate while reading a book in a single room. Good, Navy thought to himself. Who even wanted the hassle of being mated? He knew that a mate would only want his attention, which would limit his reading time even more. He already had a job that did that. But, of course, his brother and the rest of the family didn't understand that Navy had a life goal that had nothing to do with mates and children or with the renowned Amana Industries. Navy's goal was a bit more complex, and a lot more impossible. He wanted to read all the books in the world, at least the ones that interested him. There was a lot of stuff out there he wouldn't be reading because of lack of interest, but there were some real gems he couldn't wait to get his hands on. He couldn't help himself from reading thrillers over again. With the second read, knowing the resolution, he tried to find all the clues he missed in the first go in hopes of guessing the culprit earlier in the next book he read. His secret wish, one he would never, ever, but ever share with his family for fear of what they would do with the information, was to find a mate that would share this quirk with him. In fact, he would love to meet a woman who would read the same book as him and then challenge each other to find the bad guy before the other. Sort of a reading to the resolution race. That wouldn't happen. Not because Navy was misogynistic enough to believe that women didn't read thrillers, but because he didn't actually want the rest of the stuff that came with a mate. Oh, steady sex would be fun enough. It was more of the other things that would get him running for the hills. Things like friends and outings, family obligations, and, forbid the fucking thought, having kids. Navy loved his nieces and nephews, but he was also terrified of them. Being responsible for the intellectual and emotional development of another living thing was... Navy shuddered as he dug through his luggage for the pile of books he packed for his three-day stay in San Diego. 
He didn't even want to think about what kids would do to his reading time. He was sure Jewel and Takis hadn't read a book since college, unless it was a cheesy bedtime storybook for one of the thousand children they had. Okay, so they only had a fourth on the way. That still seemed very daunting. His pocket vibrated, announcing an incoming call. He reached for it, figuring he would have to ignore a call from Banks. Seeing Jewel's name on the screen, he clicked on the call. Jewel, he said in greeting. Navy, Amana, you didn't text me to say that you landed safely. He rolled his eyes. Sorry, Jewel. I forgot that you needed a breakdown of my day, minute by minute. Do not sass me. I get that enough for my teenager. Are you at the hotel? Have you stepped outside, gone to the pier? She continued firing off questions at him without letting him get in a word. Navy, you're not answering me. I can't, Jewel. You're talking too much. Oh, ha fucking ha, you are so funny. Are you okay? Yes, he said through gritted teeth. Good. Promise me one thing, Jewel said, using the same tone she did when she was trying to coax a smartphone away from her teenage daughter. You'll explore the city? I would give anything to be in the sun right now, so long as I wasn't 20 years pregnant with this massive bowling ball. Navy chuckled. For a woman in the final stages of her fourth pregnancy, she sure hated being pregnant. It was like the woman lied to herself about the nine-month ordeal to get the final product, a pink screaming thing that turned into a screaming toddler that then turned into a screaming teenager. It was a lot of screaming. I need to get back to my room and go over Banks' notes for the meeting tomorrow. What if I told you that I have a better suggestion for you? I know there's a charming little bookstore a 15-minute walk away from your hotel. He perked right up. Oh? Jewel giggled. I knew that would get your attention. But I will tell you what the store is called if you promise to walk there. He scrunched up his face as if his sister could see him. I can just look it up for myself. Sure you could, she answered. Thing is, the owner is a tiny old couple. They don't own a computer. The store doesn't have a website. How is that even possible? How did you even hear about it? I'm a mother of four. The FBI ain't got nothing on me if I'm looking for something. Now, do I have your word that you'll go exploring? Navy considered this for a few seconds. A small bookstore that wasn't online? He nearly drooled at the thought of all the hidden book gems he could find in such a place. If Jewel had found it, he could too, but that would cut into his reading time. Okay, Jewel, I promise to explore while reading a book. I'll know if you lie to me, Navy Amana. I want photographic proof. Sure thing, he said, knowing there were a few ways around that for sure. The store is called the Shopkeeper's Library. She rattled off the address, which Navy scribbled quickly on the hotel notepad laid out on one of the many tables in the big living room. Go geek out. He would do just that, all alone, just like he preferred. Just a man, his wolf, and the peaceful joy of a good book. Chapter 2. Karina Karina's sigh was in heaven, or as close as any living human could be to paradise. Draped in her favorite soft blanket with her teddy bear as a pillow, she was completely engrossed in the latest novel by her favorite author. A huge glass of sweet iced tea sat on the end table while she sprawled on the couch. She hurriedly turned the page, her entire body desperately hungry for what was coming next. This shit is good. Really, this was the perfect way to spend a Sunday afternoon after a very busy week of running her family's brokerage, Psy Financial. The last month had been nothing short of a stressful disaster. Things were only just starting to calm down after her parents' accident. She was truly looking forward to returning to the office with her father in the morning. But first, she needed to polish off this book plus the other two that were patiently waiting for her on the coffee table, and the fresh jug of overly sugary tea she made for just this purpose. 
A few slices of lemon popped next to the melting ice of her drink as she brought it up to her lips for a sip, her eyes never leaving the page. The protagonist was just about to make a startling discovery. She could feel it in her bones, and it was going to be good. She turned the page again, nearly jumping to her feet when a loud bang, bang, bang interrupted the blissful silence. Karina smacked her book shut with a loud grunt. The knocking only increased, the banging making her teeth hurt. Of course someone would knock at the door at the most crucial point of the novel. You'd think that living alone, her precious reading time wouldn't be interrupted. But no, that was too much to ask for. A quick peek through the peephole, and Karina froze. She backed away from the door to the sound of more knocking. She blinked a few times to clear her eyesight. It just wasn't possible. She frowned and looked again. Well, that was quite the sight. On the other side of the door, her very conservative, very professional, exceedingly proper father was waiting for her to open the door. At least, the man with a cloud of thinning white hair looked like her father. Karina couldn't be sure. She had never seen her father wearing anything but a three-piece business suit. The man waiting on the other side was wearing a pair of Bermudas and a bright neon blue shirt with a loud pattern of red flowers. Karina swung the door open, ready to ask him if he bumped his head or something. The question died on her lips when she saw her dad's toes. The man wore sandals. She couldn't remember ever seeing her dad's feet not encased in some shiny, fancy shoes. All that aside, she did have a few memories of him wearing boating gear, a pair of boat shoes paired with tan slacks and a navy pullover. That was only when they went sailing. This attire screamed retirement. The issue there, of course, was that Jonathan Sai was never going to retire. Ever. After the accident, while he was lying in his hospital bed, the very first thing he said after waking up was, Get me my suit, Karina. I have to get to my meeting. The doctors threatened to sedate him if he moved an inch out of bed. Are you okay? She asked her father, reaching out to check the temperature of his forehead. Mom smacked her hand away. What are you doing? Hug your father. If Karina was surprised by her father's appearance, it was nothing compared to what she saw Francesca sigh wearing. Her designer-obsessed mother was wearing a swimsuit. Nothing covered her but a sheer yellow mock dress. Her sandals matched, the canary-colored wicker nearly blinding Karina. What the actual fuck is going on? Is this a body snatcher situation? Dad barked out a laugh as he pushed into the condo. Invite us in, my girl. Karina moved out of the way, and her parents pushed in before settling on the couch. Dad grabbed the iced tea and downed it in one long gulp. Ugh, that was delicious. Could use a bit of booze, but that's just me. Oh, Mom giggled. Naughty. Karina blinked at her parents, confused by their strange, out-of-character clothing, and... really what she could only describe as a nearly teenage attitude. Not that I don't absolutely adore this new energy you've got going on, but what is happening? Karina motioned to their footwear. Mom's sandals were clunky without even the smallest of heels. Flats. Francesca sigh didn't wear flats. Shit, she didn't even own flats, as far as Karina knew. Whatever do you mean, darling? Mom asked, heading toward the kitchen. 
She riffled through the cupboards until she spotted the very meager alcohol selection she had. You have nothing by way of booze, Karina. Yep, because I don't make a habit of drinking. Karina had to be the only adult in existence who would be reprimanded by her parents for not having enough booze on hand. What was even happening? Well, we need something to do cheers with. This is a celebration. Jonathan Bear, think we could have Sonia deliver some champagne? Mom, Karina sighed. Do not order champagne. It's Sunday. Sonia is probably at church with her family. Leave the poor woman alone. What we could do is share the information with the rest of the class. What is going on? Mom clapped her hands together and rushed back to Dad's side. The couple exchanged a loving glance. Mom squealed her delight while Dad puffed out his chest with pride. Karina, we're retiring. She began to laugh. At first, it was a confused sound that believed the joke. But as her parents watched her as if she was losing her mind, Karina's laughter turned hysterical. Because she didn't think it was a joke anymore. <laughs> retire? What do you mean, retire? You're only 60. You can't... You couldn't... Karina shook her long black hair confused and scared, maybe even a bit angry. Well, after the accident, we got to talking. We've had a good life, you know, but we worked so hard to build the business, we never really got to enjoy ourselves. Karina balked. We go sailing all the time. Mom gave her a small, pitying look. Honey, we don't mean a few hours of leisure here and there. Your father and I are moving to a beach house right near the water. Got it for a steal, too, <laughs> Dad chuckled. Which brings us to the merger. Karina's eyes could have, and probably did, pop right out of her head. Anything but the M word. It was an ugly word. A terrible word that brought with it sheer panic and a million other emotions. Betrayal. Sadness. The list went on and on. We talked about that, Karina said, refusing to use the evil word. We agreed it wasn't the best course of action. Right, Dad said with an uncomfortable glance toward Mom. I know we said that, and to be straight with you, kiddo, I did tell the folks at the other company that we wouldn't be merging. I did. But then the accident happened, and uh, he shrugged. I was lying in that hospital bed next to your mother, and I had so many damn regrets, Karina. All those long hours spent at the office away from you two. All those times I should have been around but wasn't. I need to make up for that. I can't make up for the childhood stuff I missed, but I can give you a better future. By merging with this bigger company, you'll have more staff at your disposal. You won't have to put in all those long hours. But I don't mind the long hours. It's fun working with you. Karina meant it, too. Not many people would be thrilled at working with their fathers, but she knew they made a good team. They kicked ass together. And when the day ran long, they ordered takeout and chatted through their meal as they continued working. It more than made up for all the recitals, plays, and graduations her father missed throughout her life. Working together was getting that lost time back. Well, kiddo, I know you love the business. More than me, actually. But I'm telling you, when the boat capsized and we almost died, it wasn't the business I was thinking of. It was all of those nights I came home to a dark house because my two girls were already asleep. But... That was all Karina could say, on repeat, while her parents looked at her as if she was throwing a temper tantrum. I've already made sure that they will keep you on as the boss in this branch, but no way will you be as busy as we have been. 
You'll be under a company's huge umbrella. It'll be so good for you, kiddo. You'll be able to go out and make friends. Maybe find a nice man or woman to fall in love with. Karina rolled her eyes. They were always on her case to find someone to settle down with. Like she had time. Like she even wanted kids. Not that there was anything wrong with having children. Karina just hadn't given it much thought. She was so sure she would spend the next ten years of her life building up the business with her father, she hadn't even wanted to think about marriage and babies. What if I say no? she asked, crossing her arms and tapping her foot at her parents. What if I refuse this merger? Dad sighed with a soft smile. You can't, kiddo. The company has already sent over their rep. You're meeting him tomorrow morning at 11 at the office. It's all but finalized. I won't be there, of course. I'm letting you handle everything from now on. I want to go to bed at a ridiculously late hour tonight. And in the morning, I want to wake up when I wake up. I don't want to rush through the door, but take a leisure cup of coffee with your mother by the water. Maybe crack open a book. Karina huffed silently. Of course, he would use books as a way for her to be on board. There was just no way in hell Karina would ever give anyone a hard time about wanting to read. In fact, Mom cut in, picking up the abandoned novel from the couch. You'll have more time to read, too. Not that you should spend your time reading. You definitely need to get out there. Your last boyfriend was what? Back in college? What was his name? Bob, Dad answered with a sneer. Never did like that one. If you're going to find a husband, make sure he isn't a surly, snobby fucker. Now excuse us, we really do need to find champagne to celebrate. Karina threw herself in front of the door, barring the only escape. No! She shook her head. No, you can't go. This can't be it. This can't just be the end. Dad laid a hand on her shoulder before hugging her close. It's already done, kiddo. Like I said, the preliminary papers are all signed. You just have to finalize everything with their rep tomorrow. Karina glared at her parents. I need time to think. She grabbed her novel and her purse, stuffed her feet into a pair of wedge sandals, and ran out of her condo complex. She needed time to think of a plan, of a way to get her business away from the so-called umbrella of a larger company. She had to get things back to the status quo. Her feet led her to the place where she did all her best thinking. The shopkeeper's library would bring her all the answers she needed. Chapter 3. Navy For a good ten seconds, Navy considered breaking his promise to Jewel, but his sister was too damn clever for her own good. She would find out. For all he knew, the family had sent spies to San Diego to make sure Navy did get himself out of the hotel, and not just for meetings, but for some leisure time. Why his parents and two of his siblings were suddenly on a mating kick, he didn't understand. As the heir to the family business, Banks was recently mated. It was only a matter of time before he and Annika started popping out babies to the same frequency as Jewel. The world didn't need more Amanas. He meant it when he said he didn't want to mate. It would take a very special kind of woman to catch and maintain his attention away from what he really wanted to do, read until his eyesight gave out and his wolf howled for a good run through the woods. Navy doubted any such woman existed, not because he didn't think women were great readers, but because it would mean he had to look up from his books long enough to notice. If his dream mate did exist, he wasn't going to find her in San Diego all the way across the country. That would only spell disaster, really. How would they decide where to live? Or, more specifically, how the hell was he supposed to convince any local woman to move back to New York City? Impossible. P. 
People don't just pick up and leave their hometowns for no reason. If anyone were to ask Navy to move away from his town, he'd probably bust his gut from laughing so hard. Not that he laughed all that much. No, the funny bone of the family was Ivor. Banks was the heir and resident grump. Ivor was the flighty baby, leaving Navy in his bookish ways as the shy one. With a sigh, Navy peeled himself out of his suit. It was way too damn hot to be wearing his three-piece suit out and about. Besides, he was going to a bookstore. He could slip on a pair of shorts and a nice button-down short-sleeved shirt and be comfortable while he explored the stacks. As he left the luxury hotel, Navy had to admit that San Diego was a nice city. It was no New York, as it had an entirely different vibe. Where his hometown was all about speed and flash, San Diego was like a resort town that had decided to start a business. People didn't seem to be in as much of a rush as they were in New York. The passers-by smiled, greeting strangers. It was... strange. But what really captured his attention was that on the 15-minute walk to the bookstore, he spotted a few green places that were beautiful and quiet, places that just longed to be used as reading spots. Navy made a plan for his afternoon. He would find something purely decadent to read, settle in one of those spots, and read the day away. He would have all evening to read the notes Banks had sent him about the merger. Besides, he already went through them on the plane. He could walk into that meeting right away and get it done in no time at all. Why Banks had decided to send him was a mystery. It was probably just to avoid being apart from his new mate. Navy tried not to roll his eyes at the thought of changing his schedule because he fell in love. Of all the silly things in the world. He continued his walk down the picturesque street, lined with all kinds of shops and businesses that would appeal to the laid-back San Diegans. The only downside, despite the breeze coming off the water, was the heat. It was way too hot for him. Sure, it got hot in New York City, too. The warm temperatures usually meant an increase in the overcrowded city's stench, but that's when Navy could definitely lock himself in his condo and not budge. He had good air conditioning and a delivery service for absolutely everything. He never needed to leave his place. All the conveniences he was used to were back home. Now, if he needed or wanted something, he had to go out and, he shuddered, interact with people. He could only hope that he was right about the owner of the shop, a quiet old man who would leave him in peace. When it finally came into view, Navy grinned. It was exactly as he had pictured it. Excitement made his steps faster. The bookstore was small. Actually, small was too big a word for the little shop. It immediately called to him. Even his wolf started to get excited at all the book scents he would get to sniff out. Navy looked up at the sign, the shopkeeper's library. It was a funny name for a bookstore, but he was sure there would be an interesting story behind it. Navy pushed the glass door, surprised by its weight. The cloudy glass made it pretty damn obvious it was old and would benefit from a bit of oil and a wash. The smell of old and new books hit him as soon as he walked in. It was the closest to paradise Navy ever came to. Forget a sunny beach with its overcrowded shores, crabs, and all the other things he disliked about being near other people. This was a real vacation. A tiny woman with a puff of white-blue hair sat in a gigantic red chair, turning the pages of a book that lay in her lap. Her thick glasses slid down her nose as she lifted her head to see who had walked into her store. She broke into a smile, giving Navy the distinct impression that this woman was truly a book lover who loved nothing more than to share her passion with other people. Why, hello there, young man. Welcome to our shop. She made to stand up but Navy rushed toward her. Oh, please don't let me interrupt you. Stay right where you are and continue reading. I wouldn't want to bother you. Her grin broadened. Well, aren't you just the pure picture of a fellow reader? She patted the book in her lap. It does seem that the door always opens just as I get to a good spot. Navy returned her grin. I think that's an evil law of life. I'll just browse until something catches my fancy and gladly let you get back to your reading. 
Without another word but a grateful smile, the older woman returned to her reading. Navy made his way down the first narrow aisle. The shop may have been small, but the space was maximized. Older tombs and collector's pieces made up half the store, while the other was newer volumes. Navy didn't know where to look first. This was the kind of bookstore he adored. There were a few in New York, but finding one so darling was really making his trip to San Diego worth it. He was in the third aisle when he heard the door open. The shopkeeper laughed brightly and began a conversation with the patron. This newcomer had a soft voice, one that was very musical and made his heart tremble strangely. Navy thought back to his day and decided that he must not have eaten enough. He was feeling weak. He took the three books he intended to purchase and made his way to the front of the store. As soon as he rounded the corner, Navy dropped his precious books. There, in the small entrance of the bookstore, the most beautiful woman he had ever seen stood with her head bowed over a book, a smile curling over her lush lips. Mate, his wolf howled happily. We have found our mate. Navy nearly tripped over the books he dropped as he tried to regain composure. It was difficult to do. This woman, the one his wolf was convinced was his mate, was stunning. Her long black hair fell over her shoulders in thick, inky waves, curling over her breasts. Shit, don't look at her breasts. That's so rude. He cleared his throat and looked up to her eyes. They were the most fascinating shade of brown, more like a swirl of caramel than human eyes. Her skin was sun-kissed, and a few freckles dotted her high cheekbones. Her lips, pink and plump, were no longer bent into a smile, but slightly parted in surprise. Did you find what you were looking for? The shopkeeper asked as her aged and experienced eyes bounced between Navy and the woman. Y His voice cracked. Yes, thank you, he tried again after a discreet cough. It was hard to speak when all he could think about was the woman in the light pink dress with the beautiful eyes and silky waves of black hair. His wolf was driving him to the brink of madness, repeating over and over that the woman was his mate. What was he supposed to do? Jump on her? Tell her that they were meant to be? Navy read enough books to know that saying any such things would terrify the woman, as well it should. He was a stranger to her. He shouldn't be gawking, but fuck it all. He couldn't even help himself. Her long, tanned legs were dressed in a pair of wedge sandals that matched her dress perfectly. She wasn't tall, but she wasn't short either. Just the right size, his wolf said, sounding more and more deluded by the second. Do you not smell that? That's her smell. She smells like jasmine. It's lovely. She's lovely. We have to know her name. Ask her. Her name. Now. Is everything all right? His mate asked, blinking long lashes at him. Good Lord, help him. Her voice wasn't just musical. It was attuned to the rhythm of his heart, making the damn thing beat like a drum in his chest. His sweaty palms were going to ruin the books he carried. Of course you'd be thinking about books at a time like this, his wolf huffed. We still don't know her name. Make a move, quickly, before we lose her forever. It's not like we can just track her down. This isn't our city. Navy sobered immediately, at least as much as he could when he was faced with the most stunning and alluring woman he had ever seen. Whoever she was, she was indeed a local. He could tell just by her interaction with the shop owner. That meant this was doomed before it even began, because, of course, his mate wouldn't be from New York. My boy, the older woman asked, are you ready to take those books? Yup. Yes. Thanks. Sorry to bother you. She grinned, noticing him looking at the woman. No bother at all, dear. I was just telling sweet Karina here that there was a fellow book lover in the shop. She said the same thing as you that there seems to be an unwritten law that just dictates interruptions as soon as things get good. Karina, as was the woman's name, gave him a small wave. Hey. Hello, he said. Only Navy wasn't sure his voice was working anymore. He cleared his throat and resisted the urge to run his hands through his hair. 
The nervous tick wouldn't do him any favors if he got hair oil all over his soon-to-be new books. You're not from around here, Karina stated. That obvious? He asked with a chuckle. Sort of. I'm in here all the time, and I've never seen you. Stands to reason that you're not from San Diego. He nodded. I'm a New Yorker. Oh, lucky, she gasped. There are so many bookshops I would just love to visit there. Her eyes cut to the old lady, who was now busy ringing up his purchase on an old cash register machine. She had to take the time to write down the name and author of each book, no doubt to update the store's inventory. Navy had the urge to help her, maybe set up a streamlined system for the kind, bookish woman. It wasn't his place, though. Obviously, I would never cheat on you, Mrs. Miller, Karina said. The older woman waved her off. So long as you're reading, the world is a happy place. Navy agreed with that. If you ever do go to New York, make sure you check out Benny's books. It's lovely. Lots of older books in great condition. Karina beamed at him. Hey, thanks. She pulled out her phone. I'll make a note of it right away. Why don't you two exchange numbers? Mrs. Miller said. That way, if Karina ever makes it to the Big Apple, you can show her around. Karina's eyes popped wide open. Oh, I wouldn't want to impose. I wouldn't feel comfortable taking your phone number, Navy said at the same time, making Karina's surprised face even more pronounced. I don't mean that I wouldn't want your number, I just... He blew out a breath. He was making a damn fool out of himself. Why was it so damn hard to talk to a woman? Who was he even? It's because she's our mate, and she's lovely. She should have our number and the other way around. How can we find her again if we don't have each other's info? Navy tried to ignore his wolf. Mrs. Miller packed his books in a canvas tote printed with the shop's name and logo. She held back the package. Go on, you two. Navy grabbed a slip of paper and pen from the counter and quickly jotted down his name and phone number. Here, he said, handing Karina the paper. It was the gentlemanly thing to do, he knew, but it was also to get the hell away from the store before he did something silly like propose to Karina. Now that would be a story good enough for a novel. Come again soon, Mrs. Miller sang, finally passing him his purchase over the counter. Thanks. It was a pleasure to meet you both. He headed for the door and looked back one more time. He blinked in Corina's direction, hoping his brain could take an everlasting picture of his mate, because he was never going to see her again. Chapter 4 Karina. Karina couldn't quite believe it. Mrs. Miller, sweet, tiny, old Mrs. Miller, had tried to play matchmaker like this was the turn of last century. Not that Karina was all that mad about it. The man in question was quite the dish. With his sandy blonde hair and green eyes, clean shaven square jaw, and wide muscular shoulders, the man was quite the perfect male specimen. Navy. That was his name, apparently. Karina wondered if it was a nickname or if it was one of those interesting family names that people sometimes get. His handwriting was neat and tidy, almost like he was always controlling his movements. Except when he dropped books. Karina didn't want to think about it too much, but she had the feeling that he had dropped those books because of, well, her. It was a conceited thought to have, so definitely not something she would have usually thought. There was just something about the way he had looked at her, like he wanted to eat her up whole, or something like that. It was downright distracting. She watched him leave the bookstore before looking down at his number. She almost texted him to see if he wanted to meet up for coffee, but that was way presumptuous. She wasn't the kind of woman who did that, though she sure wished she was because Navy was something special. Feeling a little like she needed romance in her life, Karina didn't go straight for the thriller and mystery novels she preferred. 
she went for the romance section, which coincidentally was Mrs. Miller's favorite. Karina chose a few books, paid for them, and tucked them safely in her tote as she walked out of the shopkeeper's library. She had the perfect way to spend the rest of her Sunday, but she couldn't go back home. It was tainted by her father's latest news. She needed another place to go. Good thing there were quite a few good reading spots around the area that were just the ticket. Karina beelined for her very favorite. It was a small park with a few benches shaded over by trees. It wasn't typically busy, but when she saw that every bench was already taken up, she felt her shoulders sag. You can share this bench with me if you don't mind. The manly voice, pitched low, made her shiver despite the heat. You, she gasped, spotting Navy already settled on one of the benches, novel open in his hands. Me, he said with a grin. This is kind of funny. We end up at the same bookstore and the same reading spot. Her heart fluttered and beat against her chest. Not only because the handsome man was grinning at her, making those eyes of his sparkle, but also because... What were the chances? The entire time she was paying for her books, Mrs. Miller tried to convince her to call Navy. The older woman was adamant that she felt something passing between them. Karina didn't have the heart to tell her that it was the lust of the young, lonely, and possibly horny. Karina didn't want to scandalize her aged friend. Yet here she was, standing in front of Navy again. She took a seat beside him, tucking her book bag on her knees. I don't think we actually introduced ourselves. I'm Karina. Navy. He held out his hand for her to shake. The second their fingers touched, the air became a little thin. It was hard to breathe when long, powerful fingers curled around hers like they were meant to be intertwined. Karina knew they held on a second too long, but she didn't mind at all. She would have kept holding his hand until he pulled away. So, Mr. New York... I don't think there are too many good reading spots like this where you're from. There are a few in Central Park, I suppose. Also, a few good cafe shops that don't get too busy. But this... He looked around at the quiet park. This is something else. Isn't it? I love this city. But like I said, I'd love to go to New York. It's sort of on my bucket list. If I had a bucket list... Holy shit, she was rambling. She couldn't stop talking. Words poured out of her at increasing speed. She had to force a deep breath to make herself stop. You should visit, definitely. She gave him a tight smile, making sure to keep her lips closed before she offered herself up or something just as silly. She took out a book and held it up. Happy reading, Navy. He inclined his head toward her with an easy smirk. Same to you, Karina. Good Lord, the way he said her name. It made her want to hear him say it over and over. Not in a dirty way, though she wouldn't mind that in the least. She forced her eyes onto the page, blinking at the words, pleading with them to be more interesting than the man sitting next to her. Never before had she found a living, breathing man more interesting than a book. It was a new sensation. One that could only be explained by Navy the New Yorker, with his green eyes and perfect sandy hair. Karina settled back onto the bench with a deep breath and read the first sentence of her book again. This time, she even managed to get all the way to the fourth sentence before realizing she didn't actually know just what the book was about. I can't seem to focus, Navy sighed, closing his book. Which isn't something that usually happens to me. I must be hungry. Karina turned to look at him, and once again, she was struck by the impression that he wanted to devour her. 
as if he was hungry for her. She gulped audibly before closing her book. There was no need to put in a bookmark. She'd have to start it all over again. I'm having the same issue. He made a noncommittal sound. Perhaps it's time for some lunch. Would you like to join me? Karina didn't mean for it to happen, but her jaw dropped down to her lap and her tongue rolled out. Her eyebrows were somewhere in the clouds. Sure, she heard herself say. I'd like that. What the hell was happening? She had started off the day so well, but it had gone to shit with Dad's news. A trip to the bookstore was supposed to make her feel better. But that wasn't what happened at all. Actually, Karina didn't even know what was happening. She was on her way to her first date since college. Not that this was a date. She didn't even know the man. Good. Navy stood and offered her his arm. Let me carry your books for you. She blinked at him. Her throat went dry, and she could have sworn she forgot her own name. Not only was Navy gorgeous, but he asked her out to lunch and offered to carry her books. That was it. Karina decided she had fallen into one of Mrs. Miller's romance novels. Shit like this just didn't happen to regular women in an everyday way. Nope. Where would you like to go? Navy asked her as they walked away from the park. Karina thought about it for two seconds before coming up with the perfect answer. There's a small restaurant on the pier. It's a hole in the wall, blink and you miss it sort of place. Tourists never go there because it's not flashy, so it shouldn't be too busy. Excellent. Local flavor. I like it. Karina sort of led the way. I hope you don't mind the walk. It's about 15 minutes. Oh, not at all. I walk around a lot back home. It drives my brothers crazy because it takes me too long to get anywhere, but I quite enjoy soaking up my setting, seeing how the city changes from season to season, from year to year. She looked at him from the corner of her eye, trying to decipher if he actually meant it. It seemed that he did. It was a surprising answer. That's quite romantic, she admitted. Then Navy did the most adorable thing in the world for an already sexy, gorgeous man to do. He blushed and shrugged. No, not at all. Sure it is, she argued. You like to soak in your environment. That means you notice little things here and there. Your significant other must love that. No haircut or new outfit gets by you, I bet. He chuckled. I suppose if I did have a significant other, that could be true. But I'm single, have been for a long time. Karina had to stop herself from doing a happy dance at the news. Obviously, this little random Sunday afternoon date couldn't go anywhere significant since he was from all the way across the country. But at least he was single. If they were to take a walk around the block naked, no one would get hurt. Oh, well, that's too bad, she finally said. Your skills are wasted on a single status. Dare I ask how many new haircuts and outfits were overlooked by your significant other? This time, Karina wasn't able to shut down all of her emotions. She grinned wide at him and his cute attempt to figure out if she was single and straight. My last boyfriend didn't notice much, no. That's unfortunate. Though, I suppose he is your ex for a reason. She snickered. Oh, for multiple reasons. But that was one of them. When I took him over to Mrs. Miller's place, he didn't even look at the books. He always just stood by the door, checking his watch every two seconds, even though he was on his phone the whole time. Who does that? And you stayed with him? he asked in a mock shock voice. Karina rolled her eyes. Right? The behavior and the fact he wasn't a reader should have been my very first hint that something was way off with him. She needed to lead the topic away from her old relationship. 
Wasn't there a rule that you're not supposed to talk about your ex when you're on a first date? Not that this was a first date. At all. This was one native San Diegan showing a visitor around. It was practically her social duty, right? Karina took him to the cafe on the pier. The aptly named little spot was just darling. The inside was small, bordering on cramped, but the patio was amazing. The furniture had deep and plush cushions set into wicker frames. All of the colors were peaceful pastel tones, none of it actually matching. Their iced coffee was something to cry about, and every single thing on their menu was delicious. It was her favorite spot to eat in all of the city. The hostess, the owner's teenage daughter, took them out to the patio to one of the best tables. The sun made the water shine in the distance, basking all of the city in double the warm glow. This is beautiful, Navy said, happily settling down. Yet another spot I would never have found without some help. He explained how his sister was the one to tell him about the bookstore on the pain of exploring. Well, give me your phone, she said. I'll take a picture of you out here to prove to her that you kept your word. Navy smiled at her. I'd like that very much. With trembling fingers, Karina took a picture of Navy. Good lord, he was photogenic. She was actually sad that she wouldn't be able to get a copy of the picture for herself. But she did the next best thing. She put her phone number in his contact list. Considering this was a non-date with a stranger, it was a pretty bold move. Even if she did have his number. Lord of the books, do not let me down, she pleaded as they ordered coffees and lunch. Navy winked at her with an appreciative thanks when the iced coffee was delivered. Karina's heart jumped over itself. Oh yeah, Mrs. Miller's instincts were right. This was definitely going somewhere. Chapter 5 Navy Navy was sure that all of San Diego was doing its level best to make him fall madly in love with his mate. Even though they were relative strangers, even if they knew next to nothing about each other, save that they both liked any form of caffeine, reading, and quiet places where they could lean into their favorite pastime. If he talked to Jewel about it, his sister would thank fate for bringing him the one woman he could actually fall for. But he wasn't Jewel. And if it wasn't for Karina dropping out of nowhere, he wouldn't even believe fate was real. Navy couldn't have explained why he decided to join Karina for lunch, but he wasn't sure there was much of an explanation beyond the fact that he wanted to. He wasn't in San Diego for very long, and he would spend time with her today while he could. He would worry about what it all meant in the morning. It means she's our mate, and we very well can't go back to New York until we've made things between us official. I refuse to let you fuck this up for me. We spend a whole lot of time sitting in silence. You owe me this. His wolf was in a mood, but only because the animal was feeling particularly protective of his mate. Already, the animal was filling his head with all kinds of things that, frankly, he found terrifying. All Navy could really get behind right now was the idea of lunch, of getting to know Karina a little bit. Maybe touch her hand again. God, her fingers were cute. Everything about her was cute. She brought her iced coffee to her lips and took a sip. Her eyes closed in bliss. She made a satisfied little sound when she swallowed that nearly made him fall off his chair. Real classy, Navy. Way to impress the lady. He was so out of touch with flirting, he didn't even really know what flirting was. Did he tell her that she smelled nice? Did he tell her that her hair was beautiful? that he wanted to run his fingers through it, maybe caress her chin, maybe even wrap the long strands around. Nope. He stopped himself from going fully sexual before he really made an ass of himself. Have you always lived here? He asked her. Yep. Born and raised. Even stayed here for college. 
I wanted to stick around to keep working with my dad. He built his business from the ground up, and it was so exciting to me. Going into work with him, being his little assistant, learning the ropes, knowing it was going to be mine one day. She shrugged, smiling sadly. There was an edge of melancholy to her words. Are you not working with your father anymore? She snorted out her response. Oh, I'm working with my father, all right. And I'll keep on working for that business until the day I retire at the ripe old age of whenever the hell I feel like it. It was Navy's turn to laugh. I take it you enjoy the work then? Absolutely. It might not be the path I would have chosen for myself, but it's my family's path, so I'll take it. Gladly and willingly. He smiled at her. Her words were so similar to how the Amana Pack ran their family and business. Karina's understanding of that, her willingness to lean into her duty, hit something inside of him. His wolf was obviously overjoyed about it, too. See? She is ours. Now that she's spoken like that, you know we can't just leave. We can't just turn our backs on her. Navy waited until the waiter had delivered their food a massive sandwich for him, with every type of salami under the sun, and a mango chicken salad for her, to ask his next question. What kind of business do you do? Financing, mostly. Isn't that interesting? That's what my family does, too. Mostly. Navy noticed her nearly hidden frown. He decided to ask the question he wished someone would ask him. And what would have been your path if it were up to you? She blushed, pushing her meal around. I should think it was obvious. Opening my own bookstore, of course. She looked up to meet his eyes with a grin. Of course, he repeated. I've literally never told another soul this, but that's what I wanted to do as well. I never told my family. I knew what they would say, and I didn't want to shirk my own duties to them. What a pair we make. Two bookish people who won't tell our families what we really want because we're too... She scrunched up her face, looking for the right word. Shy is how they would describe me. Oh my god, same! She gasped excitedly. But I don't think it's that. They spoke in unison before dissolving into giggles. So what do you think it is? She asked, suddenly actually shy. He considered for a moment, taking a bite of his meal. He grappled with the right word. It was one thing to describe himself, but another to lay an identifier on his mate. He wanted to make sure he picked the right word. No easy feat, considering there are over a million English words. I definitely don't think it's shyness. I think it's more of a gentleness. Not wanting to rock the boat, she agreed with a head nod. Also, major props for admitting you're gentle. Not many guys out there would lean into it unless it was a line. She met his gaze head on. And I know that wasn't a line. Lord have mercy. Her eyes really were beautiful, but when their full force was turned on to him, it was like the sun shined only for him. He couldn't dare look away. He swallowed, his mouth so dry, every bit of him hungered for some kind of sustenance. You did spot me in a bookstore and then reading alone on a park bench, he finally conceded. I can't exactly hide that part of myself, nor would I wish to. And you don't have to, she shrugged. I like it. It's very tortured and broody without all the angst. He chuckled. I think that's how I'll describe myself from now on. <laughs> You're welcome, she giggled with a cute little wink. Navy noticed that Karina's chair was a lot closer to his than it had been when they originally sat down. When she spoke animatedly with her hands, her arm, that smooth and gold bare skin, brushed against him. Taking a chance, he gently placed his foot next to hers, making their shoes touch. He would have gone for their knees, but seeing as they were both wearing short garments in the hot weather, it would be too intimate. Footsies it was. At least, Karina didn't move away from him. In fact, she seemed to push her foot into his. Okay, so now here is the ultimate book lover's test, she declared. Favorite book? He winced and frowned. That depends on so much. Genre, mood, an era even. It's such a broad question. 
She inclined her head at him, smirking and her eyes glowing. That was the only acceptable answer. Do you read thrillers? Absolutely. His heart started beating faster. She clapped her hands together. Excellent. Favorite thriller author on three, he dared, leaning into her. She leaned right back. Three, two, one, she counted down. Jorge Gray, they said in unison before once again collapsing back into a fit of laughter. The association, they chorused through giggles, both finding it hilarious that they enjoyed the same author. I agree, Navy said. Really, I do. Gray's work with the association was amazing, a true classic. I've read it a thousand times, Karina admitted. Every time I do, I try to find different clues I might have missed before. His heart skipped a beat. I do the same. She gripped his hand excitedly. You know what we should do? Start a book club, but instead of waiting until after we've read it, we read it at the same time and bounce theories off each other. His wolf began a full and loud howl. This woman, this San Diego native, was exactly his dream woman. The only slight problem being that she didn't live in New York City. It would have broken his heart if Navy thought about it too much, but as it was, he didn't want to think about that complication. He wanted to sit right at this table, keep the iced coffee coming, and discuss books until they were old and gray. If this is what his parents and Banks felt about mates, then he understood the appeal of it, the allure, the pull. It was a heady thing, and not one he was sure he could ignore. You're not meant to ignore it. We're meant to dive in, head and heart. Nothing can go wrong with this. That's what mate is all about. But, of course, the wolf was wrong. It could go wrong, and it would be the second he got back home. He would enjoy it for now and deal with the fallout later. Can I tempt you two into a dessert? The waiter sang as he came by to clear away their meal. Navy arched his brow at Karina in question, but she shook her head with a smirk. Nope, thanks. She leaned in close to him, her lips nearly brushing against his ear. I have other plans. More San Diego stuff to show you, if you're up for it. Oh, I'm up for it, he said, trying not to sound like an absolute creep. But really, what Navy wanted to do was to lay her down on the small chair and make love to those rosy lips of hers. Navy footed the bill for lunch, despite all of Karina's assurances that she could pay for herself. She very well could, he had no doubt, but no mate of his was going to take him to the best lunch of his life and pay. I'm getting dessert then, and don't you dare argue. She pouted her lips at him, and it took all of his efforts not to bend down to kiss it away. If you insist, he conceded. I do, she said with a cute little head nod. I'm taking you to Convoy Street, which is basically the ice cream capital of the city. Hope you like ice cream. Navy grabbed their book-filled tote bags before Karina insisted on carrying them. Lead the way, he said to her, knowing that if he let his instincts rule him, he would follow Karina anywhere. And he'd only just met her. Chapter 6. Karina Karina couldn't believe it. Eleven in the morning was the first time she laid eyes on Navy. They had lunch together before she led him to Convoy Street, where they shared two different ice cream flavors at two different shops. It was a very couple thing to do, but Karina wasn't letting herself dwell, or obsess, about that. Her dad gave her really shitty news in the morning, and now she was letting herself live it up with a handsome, bookish stranger. Their ice cream hunt brought them to a small little park where they took one of his books and started reading the thriller together. Sitting on a blanket Navy insisted he purchase for them, they lay under a tree, huddled together like, well, like lovers. Navy read a page, then she read a page. She was self-conscious about her reading voice, always a bit scared that she would trip over a word, especially because Navy was so damn close to her. His body warmth brushed against the bare skin of her legs and arms in a very innocent way. 
in a very heated way. You couldn't lie down next to a hot guy and not get all bothered. Especially not when said hot guy had the reading voice to make panties melt and hearts sigh. It was his turn to read, and she had a hard time focusing on the words, hunting for clues, because she was too busy trying not to fall in love with a man she had just met. Did that even happen in real life? Did strangers feel this kind of powerful connection after only a day spent together? Karina knew it was the stuff of romance, but she never, not even for one second, thought it could be possible for her. Yet, here she was, lying on a blanket, reading a book with Navy, hoping the day never had to end. She was about to start shivering, given that the sun was setting and that the temperature was dipping low. Soon they would have to part ways. Maybe she would have to find a way to stay in touch. She did have his number. Maybe she could offer up the whole book club idea in the hope of further contact. She could try to find a way to get to New York to visit. After all, Dad did say that she should have more time to herself once the merger went through. What the hell am I thinking? Flying across the country to visit a man I don't even know just because we're having a good time? Oh, but what a time it was. What do you think about this file that the lawyer leaves on the desk? I think it's suspicious. Damn. Karina nodded along, but she wasn't paying attention. She missed vital information because of Navy's dreaminess. It was turning her head upside down. He nudged her foot with his, his bare arm brushing against hers. I made that up. You seemed to be a thousand miles away. Is everything okay? You must be getting cold in that dress. He stopped himself short. He blushed dark and deep. Not that there's anything wrong with your dress. It's so light and flowy. I mean, I'm not... You look beautiful. No, you are beautiful. He looked down at the book. I'm just concerned it's getting too cold to continue. Yep, exactly what I was thinking. Please say you don't want this to be goodbye. Perhaps we could... He cleared his throat. That is to say, maybe we should do a quick venue change, if you want. No pressure. I'd love that, she blurted quickly. Probably way too quickly. Way to have zero chill, Karina. Navy's smile was so broad, so wide, so damn wonderful, Karina forgot she was cold. It's pretty late, though. Could I perhaps tempt you into having dinner with me? Karina tried to hold back her smile, but it was a losing battle. I'd love that. Now, just to be clear, this doesn't have to be a date. Navy looked into her eyes. But I would really like it if it was. Oh. Wow. Well, that happened. Karina tried to catch her breath but it was a little hard to do when Navy stared at her intently. The green of his eyes was bright in the fading sunlight. He took a chance by asking her for a date. Surely she could take a chance, too. Albeit it was a bit more of a risk, Karina wanted to. Really? She shifted her body toward his until her lips pressed against his in a soft kiss. If she had taken a chance by kissing him, sweet and tender, Navy took an even bigger risk by cupping her cheek and deepening the kiss. Karina moaned into his mouth because the man could kiss. His lips moved with hers, and his tongue flicked in and out of her mouth with an expert precision that made her knees weak. Good thing we're lying down. That's when common sense popped into her head. She was lying in a public park, kissing Navy. What was happening in her life? 
Navy slowly broke the kiss, but he didn't move his hand from her face. You're wonderful, Karina. I've had the best day with you, and I'm reluctant to see it come to an end. Dinner. That's a given now, as you've agreed. But I would like to kiss you again, if that's all right with you. Yep, she squeaked, but she couldn't say anything else because Navy kissed her. This time, he took full control, and she let him. Bookish men really made the best kissers. After what could only be described as a very public makeout session, going out for dinner with Navy wasn't such a huge imposition. Nor was it a hardship. How come it could be so damn easy to talk with a man she barely knew but was quickly getting to know very well when she was typically a bit overly cautious with men after what happened with her college boyfriend was a mystery. Karina watched as Navy swung their totes over his shoulder after folding the blanket and stuffing it into one of the bags. He held out his hand for her to take, and for a second, Karina stared at the offered palm, wondering just what in the heck he wanted. He wants to hold my hand. Oh, good lord, her heart just about exploded. It was a sweet, simple thing. One that, by rights, shouldn't cause her whole body to sing and dance. It did, though. Karina was feeling incredibly airy, like she walked right into a fairy tale. These kinds of things didn't happen to her, but she was going to soak it all up while she could. Where should we go for dinner? Navy asked, his hand squeezing hers as he smiled down at her. Karina tried to focus. Not easy when his lips were right there, still a bit swollen from their series of hot kisses. I think I know a little spot that could be good. You haven't steered me wrong yet. He grinned wider. That went to another part of her, deep down inside. Karina leaned into him with a teasing glimmer in her eyes. She led them to a small but elegant Italian restaurant on the pier. I figured you would want to soak in as much of the water as you can, she explained as the host led them to a corner of the restaurant. The booth was set into the wall, right by a massive bay window with the perfect view of the sun setting over the water. It was a miracle they'd gotten one of the best tables without a reservation. Karina chose to see it as fate intervening, showing her that this magical day-turned-evening with the wonderful stranger was red-flag-free. No warning signs. No alarm bells. Just smooth, clear coasting on the bubble of whatever it was that passed between her and Navy. Karina slid into the booth, followed by Navy. She stayed close to him, her bare leg pressing into his. If he asked her, she would say that she was cold and needed to steal his body heat. It wouldn't be untrue, exactly, but it definitely wouldn't be the only reason she pressed herself into his side. This is a cozy spot. I really like this view. You do know all of the city's secrets. Karina blushed deeply. As I said, being born and raised here gives me an advantage— I bet if we were in New York, you'd know all the cool spots. Navy frowned. He was still handsome, but Karina didn't like that his smile was suddenly replaced by a frown. I would love to say that you're right, but unfortunately, it would be a lie. I don't get out much when I'm back home. I work very long hours for my family's business, and when I finally do have time away from my family, I prefer to stay in my condo and read. The best I could do is take you to a few bookshops that have a good selection of rare books. That doesn't sound so bad to me, she said with a smile. But why do you not explore your own town? He shrugged. As much as I adore New York City, it's a very crowded place. I'd say overcrowded. It's difficult to feel like I have a space of my own. Though, if I'm honest, that's probably because I didn't have much of my own space growing up. 
I thought you said your family had a massive house in the fancy suburbs. I can't imagine that it was lacking for space. Navy chuckled, a low, self-deprecating sound. With two brothers and a sister, it wasn't so much the lack of space, but the lack of silence. There's always bickering or something happening. Now that Jewel and her husband have their own little army of children, it's even worse. I bet it's wonderful, and you just haven't realized it. I love my parents to the moon and back, but I would have given a lot to have a sibling. She sighed. I was basically a miracle baby. My parents tried for a long time to have a child, but had no luck. They gave up entirely, and then, quite unexpectedly, when they had finally come to terms with their childless existence, my mom was pregnant. They had me a bit later in life and probably spoiled me too much for my own good. I don't see you like that at all. In fact, I quite like that you're close to your family, that you grew up wanting to work with your father, even if it wasn't what you would have chosen for yourself. She made a noncommittal sound. It's a lot of pressure. Being a miracle baby, I mean. I was always so scared of letting them down, of not measuring up to the image they had of their ideal kid. What I mean is, I've always worked very hard to be each version of a kid they would have wanted. Does that make sense? She blushed because this conversation had entered a whole new territory, one that wasn't just the light and breezy flirting of trying to solve a mystery novel together. This was digging deep into her history and bearing her soul to a man she barely knew. But somehow, it was so easy to talk to him. He leaned in, listened carefully, gave her all his attention. That was a powerful thing. I think it makes a lot of sense, Karina, but I'm sure your parents have but one wish for the child they longed for. Happiness. I bet if you told them what you really wanted out of life, they would wholeheartedly support you. She smiled at him. Maybe you're right. Karina thought about the merger, the one that her dad had planned, all so that he could retire and not work with her anymore. She was holding on to the business with an ironclad grip. And why? Because she had worked her whole life to take over for her father, to work alongside him, to soak up all the knowledge he had on finances and the stock market, and everything else. Now that she would have more time for herself, would she really spend it all reading? Or would she give herself the chance to explore her dream of owning a bookstore? Maybe she could help the Millers streamline their inventory process. Maybe she could even take a few shifts here and there. That was insane, wasn't it? Having a high-flying, high-paying job and daydreaming about owning a small little bookshop? And to think, she wouldn't have admitted this to herself if it wasn't for Navy's sudden and unexpected appearance in her life. Fate was a funny thing. Maybe. Just maybe, Navy was good for her. Chapter 7 Karina Whenever Karina watched romantic comedies or read romance novels, she always rolled her eyes at the idea of a candlelit dinner in a cute little restaurant. That kind of thing didn't happen in real life. But really, that was only true because her one and only boyfriend had been a college relationship where the idea of romance was nuking a bowl of ramen in the common room microwave and sprinkling some hot sauce on it to give a better flavor. When she got really lucky, there would even be a bottle of cheap wine. The night with Navy was anything but ramen and boxed alcohol. He ordered a bottle of expensive red wine and insisted on appetizers. They shared a plate of bruschetta while speculating on the end of the novel they'd spent the afternoon reading together. Unsurprisingly, they agreed on the culprit's identity. But that wasn't the end of that conversation. They started down a silly path where they each tried to outdo the other with the most ludicrous plot twists ever. 
By the time the waitress cleared away their plates, Karina's cheeks hurt from laughing so hard. Her face was flushed from a mix of the good wine, the laughter, and Navy's very intoxicating presence. They weren't even bothering to be shy anymore. Under the table, her hand was tucked onto his leg while his was wrapped around her shoulders. Whenever he said something scandalous, he leaned in to whisper in her ears. It gave her all kinds of shivers. When Navy paid for dinner, Karina felt a blast of sadness hit her square in the center of her chest. She didn't want to say goodnight. It was insane, really, that she would already be missing a man she had only met. Even after a full day spent together, jumping from one activity to the other. It's basically like we've been on three or four dates already, she whispered. Navy chuckled, making her jump. She thought she spoke in her mind, but she'd said it out loud. You know, I think you're right. Between lunch, the park, ice cream, and now dinner, it has been like a few dates all wrapped into the same day. I hope you don't mind that I've been monopolizing all of your time. She blushed. I was thinking the same thing. You don't mind? How could I? I'm the luckiest man in the world who's had the chance to spend his day with the most intriguing and beautiful woman. Oh, she was blushing everywhere after a line like that. In fact, I'm quite sad the night is at an end. It's really been wonderful. I... Navy shook his head and gave her a smirk. What were you going to say? No, nothing. It's perfectly all right. I should see you home. Navy, she warned, keeping a teasing edge to her voice. Are you turning into a shy New Yorker? Because really, I think that's an oxymoron, and I don't think it's time to revert back to your quiet self. Something sparkled in his eyes. That intense gaze of his turned hungry, and not for food, but for something else. Karina felt the look all the way to the core of her, her pussy clenching with desire for this man. It wasn't a sudden thing. Every second around Navy, from the moment she first spotted him and his dropped books in the shop, to this moment, had built up a burning need to kiss him, to lay it all out on the line. I'm not usually this bold, Karina but I'll admit that I've never been given a reason to be bold before. Not like this. He pushed her hair back over her shoulder, his thumb caressing her cheek softly. I'd like to invite you back to my hotel room to finish our reading project. I'm quite curious to see how it all turns out. Did he really mean the novel? Or did he mean things between them? because if there was any curiosity bubbling inside her, it was all about Navy. Navy was staying at the most luxurious hotel in all of San Diego. More than that, he had the hotel's penthouse suite. The only reason Karina knew how much it cost to stay here was that her godfather owned this high-end hotel chain. Whatever business Navy was in town for, it went way above and beyond the kind of business her little financing company would ever do. Oh, they did well. They had rich clients, but this was a whole other level. It was her uncle's level. May I offer you something to drink? Navy asked as they settled into the huge living room. No, thanks. She patted the couch next to her. Come, let's dig into that book. Karina watched Navy advance on her as he might head toward his favorite dessert. Probably a good thing they had chosen not to eat dessert back at the restaurant because of this look. The way Navy seemed to be soaking in every single inch of her through his gaze was the most delicious thing ever. Even more yummy than the ice cream they shared that afternoon. Navy eased down in the seat next to her, handing her the book. Their fingers grazed in the softest of touches, but it was enough to make Karina's skin burn with desire. There was a flash of something in his eyes, 
and she parted her lips to give him permission. Smart man that he was, he had already caught on. He pounced on her, his hands going to her face, his mouth on hers. The kiss was deep and powerful right off the top. His lips moved with hers as his tongue delved into her mouth, running against hers in a primal dance. Karina moaned into the embrace and locked her arms around his neck. She held on for dear life as Navy made love to her mouth as if it were the last thing he was ever going to do on this earth. He poured everything into his movements, his hands sliding down her neck, down her arms, and the length of her body until he could take a firm grasp of her hips. He gripped her and moved their position until Karina was pressed back into the cushions, with Navy sliding between her legs. Karina, he sighed between sips of her mouth. Kissing you is... Like the best thing ever? He chuckled as he continued to kiss her. <laughs> yes, he murmured against her mouth. Just that. Karina never wanted the kissing to stop. But she also wanted more. So much more. She wanted everything. It didn't matter that they had just met. This was basically their first date. Karina knew, on a soul-deep level, that Navy was something special. Somehow meant for her in that precise moment. Emboldened by this belief, she let her hand slide down the front of his shirt, fingers undoing one button at a time until the shirt drew open. The valley of his stomach was quite the sight. His abs rippled and quaked with every breath he took. His pants were made tighter by an impressive-looking erection. Karina rubbed her palm against it, feeling like the most amazing wanton ever especially when Navy groaned out her name. I can stop, she whispered. Don't, he pleaded, gripping her wrist to ease her movements up and down his length. Don't stop, Karina. She didn't, continuously rubbing the erection, but it wasn't what she wanted. She wanted to feel the smooth velvet of his hot skin against her hand. But first, she needed to shed some of her own clothes. To be fair, there wasn't much on her. With one quick motion, her pink dress went over her head, leaving her in a thankfully matching pair of pale pink undies and bra. Her aching nipples pushed against the material, straining up to meet Navy, begging for his attention. He complied without even needing her to say a thing. He dove, mouth first, closing his lips around her left nipple. He sucked hard before twirling his tongue. The wetness of it, with the tease of the coarse material, made her gasp and buck against him. Her hands found their way into his hair as she pushed her chest more firmly into his embrace. Navy moved on to her other breast, lavishing it with the same kind of pleasure as the other. It wasn't enough for either of them. He flicked the garment off and continued his exploration of her naked breasts with his fingers, his tongue, his nose. Karina was a panting and excited bundle of lust under him. She arched into his erection, rubbing herself against him in desperate need of release. He chuckled against her breasts, making her shiver in his arms. Someone is feeling a bit impatient. Can you blame me? It feels so good. It's about to feel a lot better if you'll let me do what I've been longing to do all night. She arched an eyebrow at him, but that soon disappeared when his hand went between them, rubbing at her soaking panties. He hissed out a breath. Karina, you're already so wet. She nodded, moaning his name. I guess you could say your kisses did that. He grinned at her. My kisses are about to make you way wetter. The sound of ripping material made her gasp, but not because she cared about the garment. 
not when Navy spread her legs wide and looked down at her pussy like it was the world's most impressive delicacy. He wasted no time, diving straight for her slit. He tongued her clit, making her moan and writhe under him. Her hands tangled in his hair as he abandoned her sensitive clit to take long, lazy licks of her. From ass to below her clit, Navy tasted all of her. He groaned with every new lick, suck, and nibble. Karina panted his name over and over, knowing she was so damn close to coming. All it would take was a few nips of her clit, and she would go off. Please, she whispered. Please, Navy. Say it, love. Say what you want. I... It was so damn erotic to state out loud what she wanted, but with Navy drawing circles in her core, it was something straight out of a dirty dream. Karina, he murmured. I want to come, she finally said. He grinned up at her before closing his mouth around the bundle of nerves. He sucked hard, letting his tongue move around, increasing the sensation sparking inside her. The release was hard, powerful, and so damn good, she gripped his shoulder, riding his mouth, screaming his name. Navy didn't stop when she began to shake, but pushed two fingers inside her. She clenched the fingers with her pussy, biting her lips because she didn't want to say what she wanted now. She was still riding the orgasm he had licked her to, but already she wanted more. She wanted his dick buried deep inside her. She wanted to ride him until he burst. Karina felt like a primal goddess, hungry for something that was all new, but all hers. Navy continued to pump his fingers inside of her as he nuzzled her breasts. Tell me, Karina, how was that? The best, she answered truthfully. I want more. His eyes glowed with something wild. He growled. Actually, fucking growled. It shouldn't have been, but it was one of the hottest sounds she ever heard. I don't have any condoms, he said. We can't, I mean, I'm safe, but... I'm on the pill. I'm safe, too. His eyes did that thing again, sparking and going off like lusty explosions as he studied her face carefully. Are you telling me I can take you bare right here and right now? She nodded. You need to speak the words, love. I really want you inside me. It's almost better that there's nothing between us. Karina helped him kick off his pants, and soon his erection, that hot spear, pressed against her leg. Are you sure? He asked when she closed her hand around his cock. She pumped up and down a few times, loving the reaction he had. His stomach, already taut with muscles, clenched on his groan. I am sure. Really. She circled the engorged head with her thumb. Really. She squeezed hard. Really sure. Navy wasted no time. He gripped her hips as he sat back against the cushion. In his seated position, Karina straddled him, his cock jutting out at her in excitement. Slide me inside you, Karina. She nodded, swallowing hard. She lifted her hips and placed his erection right at her entrance. His eyes burned into hers as she slowly lowered herself onto him. When she was fully seated, she bucked her hips, making both of them moan with pleasure. Navy gripped her hips and helped her move against him. With every circular thrust, her already sensitive clit screamed for attention. Her pussy clenched hard as she rode him. Her movements were slow, only increasing in speed when she knew, when she felt, just how close they both were. Karina, he whispered against her neck. You feel so good. Fuck me, love. 
Take me however you want me. His mouth closed on hers, and their mouths imitated the rest of their movements. Karina felt it, the deep coil of pleasure loosening. His grip on her hips tightened, and he bucked into her, joining in on the rhythm in a way that had her arching against him. She came hard, gasping, shouting his name. He wasn't too far behind, surging deep inside her. He thrust hard and fast, emptying himself. As they both came down from the waves of pleasure, panting through a series of kisses, Navy slowly eased out of her before carrying her to the lavish bathroom. He turned the tap on, waiting until the water was hot before helping her into the massive bathtub. I'll order us some wine if you like, he asked, kissing her softly. Only if you will join me, she responded with a wink. Wouldn't dream of doing anything else, he answered. Karina watched him leave the bathroom, perfect muscular ass working as he stepped away. She threw her head back against the side, sighing happily. For a morning that had started with heartache when she learned her father was merging the business, her day with Navy had turned it all around. Things just had to be looking up. Chapter 8 Navy The bright morning sun pushed through the curtains, basking the hotel room in a beautiful morning light. Karina, sprawled across his chest, was still fast asleep. Now this was heaven. Waking up in the same bed as his mate, her body all curled around him after a night of passion. Navy didn't want to wake Karina. He wanted to stay locked in this moment forever. He let a few moments pass, soaking in the pure joy he felt. In his mind's eye, his wolf was fast asleep, snoring away happily. The animal had spent the better part of the night pleading with Navy to mate Karina. He hadn't. Though they spent the day together and ended up in bed, it was hardly the time to bring up shifters and mating so soon. If ever. If his wolf heard him say that, the beast would rear its ugly head and rage at him until Navy placated him with all kinds of promises about forest runs and juicy steaks. For now, he would let both his mate and his wolf sleep. It was a blissful peace, like everything was finally falling into place. Obviously, that was a strange sensation, especially since he couldn't know what Karina would think of the mate situation or if she would even agree to live in New York City. She was obviously close to her family and would be reluctant to leave them. He understood. Of course he did. It was a tense situation he would deal with just as soon as the day had to start. Navy glanced at the clock. It was nearly nine on a Monday. Surely Karina would need to head to work soon. That was it then. The day had to start now. He had a business meeting to get ready for. The merger meeting was set for 11. He would like to go over the contracts once more before meeting Mr. Jonathan Sai and his legal counsel team. Then, maybe, if everything worked out, he would call Karina and take her out for a nice dinner. Or perhaps he would arrange for them to stay in. He grinned to himself as he ran his hand up and down her back, hoping to wake her in the gentlest way possible. Morning, she said, stretching beside him. These beds are a whole new level of comfort. You slept well then? She giggled, kissing his side. I slept well when I actually slept. He smirked. Ah, I apologize for keeping you up. Don't. I loved it. She spotted the clock and sat up in bed with a start. Oh shit, is that really the time? I need to go. I'm going to be late for work. And today of all days... She ran out of the bedroom, lush ass swaying as she ran to the living room to gather her clothes. Navy wrapped himself in a robe and followed behind her. I'm sorry this has to be a rush. If I'd woken up a bit earlier, I would have ordered some breakfast. Karina slid her pink dress over her head, appearing just in time to gasp. Damn, I don't have panties. He blushed, spotting the ripped fabric on the ground. 
Right. Sorry about that. She waved him off, stuffing her brawl into her tote bag from the bookshop. It's fine. I'll just take a cab back to my place. I guess... She shuffled uncomfortably on her feet. I guess this is goodbye? Navy bolted to her side and took her face in his hands. Goodbye? No, no, love. I was thinking something along the lines of, see you this evening. Her face lit up. Yeah, okay, I'd like that. Text me later? I have a pretty insane day ahead of me. I might need cheering up. He kissed her softly. Then I'll plan something that's made to cheer you up. Karina grinned at him. Oh, yeah? And how do you think you'll do that without any knowledge of the city? I have my ways, he answered mysteriously. He was also a rich man with a wealth of resources at his fingertips. He could ask the concierge to book him a few things. He could also call Jewel, who seemed to know all kinds of things about San Diego. But that would mean having to explain why he needed good date ideas. He didn't want to have that kind of conversation with his sister. No doubt, the second they hung up the call, Jewel would call their mother. Next thing, the entire Amana pack would descend on San Diego in desperate need to meet his mate. No, it was better if he asked a few of the locals for some date night ideas. After all, he only had one more night in town. He had to make it worthwhile. If it is our last night in town, that means we have to tell Karina that she is our mate. Tonight. We need to make it way more than just special. We need to make sure she doesn't ever want us to leave. Navy hated to admit it, but he agreed with his wolf. For once. The animal pranced around his head like an overly eager predator. He had to play this just right so as not to scare Karina away. I'll see you tonight, love. Tonight, then, Karina whispered in that sexy voice of hers before reaching up on the tips of her toes to kiss him. Navy couldn't help himself. He just had to deepen the kiss. After a few more false starts, Karina did leave his hotel room, waving at him, her face blushing from their kisses. He blew her a kiss, forcing his body to stay still. He wanted to keep Karina in his room and have his wicked way with her all day and all night long. Maybe, if she agreed to be his mate, there would be many days and nights like that in their future. But he had to set all of that aside for now. He had a small business to buy and contracts for them to sign. Jonathan Sai better be in a good mood. Amana Industries was coming for his company. Chapter 9 Karina Karina stood in her shower, giggling to herself as she traced the love bites Navy left during their night together. He was a very passionate man. There wasn't an inch of her body that hadn't been kissed by him. She was still a little bit giddy from all the pleasure he wrung out of her last night. And in the early morning hours. If it wasn't for the dumb merger meeting... Karina would have ditched work and stayed in Navy's bed all day. She didn't know when he had to head back home, but she didn't want to waste any time with the maddening company that was basically stealing her birthright. Not if it meant being away from Navy any more than she needed to be. I'm a little bit obsessed with this man I sort of know, she thought as she took time to blow dry her hair. After all, she had no idea how long the meeting would go, and she had every intention of rushing to Navy the second it was done. He would make it all better. A few orgasms and maybe she could forget about the fact that her father sold her heritage to a massive company that was only keeping her on for now. Karina wasn't an idiot. She knew how these mergers worked. As soon as the ink was dry and the overhead changed hands, they would make her life a living hell until she decided to leave behind the only job she had ever known. Dad was so convinced that these people were good and had the best intention. She didn't buy it. Not for a second. She had a plan all lined up in her head. 
she would walk into the meeting looking professional and like the badass that she is. She would go over every single detail and make sure there was language in the contracts that protected her job and made sure that nothing left her vulnerable to being pushed out. Karina picked her favorite outfit. Every woman had that one outfit that seemed to be magical. Didn't matter if feeling like a monster. That dress or pantsuit or pair of jeans always fit just right and always made you feel like a thousand bucks. For her, it was a bright red pencil skirt with a pair of black suede heels and a black crepe blouse. It was a little bit on the bold side for a merger company representative and his legal team, but if the rep saw her charge in wearing the red skirt, he or she would crap their pants and just know she meant business. She wasn't a scared little girl who was going to let them take her family business for all it was worth without leaving anything for her. Not a fucking chance. Ready to take on the day, running only an hour late, she made her way into her building and to her office. Dad's corner office was empty as she had suspected. Karina was disappointed that he didn't see fit to come to sign the papers himself. He had already given up on something they'd built together. Karina was hurt, truly and deeply hurt. Not that she would ever tell her father this. It would only lead to an argument. It was best for everyone if she just swallowed her pride and rolled with the punches. The thought reminded her of her conversation with Navy. Not shy. More like adverse to confrontation. She blew out a breath and made her way across the floor to the massive conference room where the meeting would be taking place. A gigantic bouquet of flowers that would easily cost a couple hundred dollars sat on her assistant's desk, dwarfing it. Curious if the bouquet was for her, because she was enough of a desperate romantic to hope that maybe Navy had found her workplace and sent her flowers... Karina flipped the small card open. Congrats on this, Bay. I knew we could pull it off together. We'll celebrate in style, if you know what I mean. There was no signature, but it was obviously not for her, but for Casey. But why the name Bay? Was it Casey's boyfriend's nickname or term of endearment for her? Navy had called her love when she left this morning. Could it really be that so soon? Her heart nearly stopped. She couldn't think about this now. Not yet. Karina was ready to welcome the representative and all the legal team that would descend on them in the conference room. Her own group of lawyers were already sitting in three chairs, bent over their tablets and phones, typing away like their lives depended on it. Karina's executive assistant, Casey, was giving orders to some underlings. Everything is ready, Miss Sai, Casey said with a nod. Thanks so much for lending me a dress. I can't believe I spilled coffee today of all days. Guess I'm nervous. Earlier, there was an unfortunate incident. Thankfully, Karina was no stranger to spills and clumsiness. She always kept a spare emergency outfit in her office, just like her father kept an extra suit coat and tie in his. If it weren't for that, she'd be facing the merger meeting without her assistant. She waved Casey off with a warm smile. Don't worry about it. We gotta stick together. Casey's eyes darkened, no doubt from fear of losing her job over this merger. Is there anything else I can get you? Karina tilted her head to the side, and Casey understood immediately. They headed for the little photocopying room near the conference room and shut the door behind them. Okay, now that we're not in front of legal and the newbies, tell me, how are you really feeling? Casey gave her an encouraging smile. I'm really sad, but I also want to make sure this goes as well as possible. I'm thinking of making an entrance— being fashionably late, waltzing in like a badass. What do you think? Casey considered this for a moment, taking in Karina's outfit. 
Well, in that outfit, I say make an entrance. Be cool and calm, but definitely make them sweat. She blew out a breath. I really wish my dad wasn't being so weird about this, that he would actually be here instead of doing fuck knows what. Retired people scare me, Casey agreed with a shudder. But mostly, I'm just like everyone else here. I want to keep my job and not be chopped by this murderer. You're my executive assistant. The only way you get chopped is if they fire me. And I made damn fucking sure they can't do that. Casey nodded. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. I wish I could be in there and go full peppy teenager on you and tell you to believe in yourself, but I'm shitting a Buick. Karina held Casey's hand, swallowing her tears and blinking fast. It's going to be fine. It has to be. My dad wouldn't have started down this path if he didn't think it was for the best. She hoped it wasn't a lie. In the back of her head, Karina thought of another conversation she had with Navy. Her deepest wish wasn't to run this business and be responsible for the livelihood of hundreds of people. She wanted to run a bookstore, read too much, and the only responsibility she would have would be to herself. Thinking of Navy and the way he made her feel gave her strength. I've got this, she assured Casey. Bring it on, Amana Industries. You're about to meet Karina Sai. Chapter 10 Navy This was hardly a hostile takeover. Navy knew for a fact that the owner of the company, Jonathan Sai, wanted to merge with a corporation that would give his family the chance to move on to different projects while still having a good and steady job. That was pretty much all he knew about the inner workings of the Sai family. If only his family was concerned about what he wanted from life. He wasn't about to have a very tense and very heated meeting with Mr. Sai's second-in-command. K. Sai, as the paperwork indicated, was set to remain the CEO of the company. The only difference would be that some of the tasks would be given to Banks and his team. It would decrease the workload of the small company by streamlining their processes to follow with Amana Industries. Basically, it was a win-win for all parties involved. That being said, he couldn't regret his family pushing him to San Diego anymore, because if they hadn't, he never would have met Karina. This was the trip that had changed his life. Navy was half ready to tell his older brother that he was quitting the family business to open his own bookstore. And all because Karina made him feel like he wasn't strange for wanting his own place in his life, his own goals. Navy tugged on his tie, vowing to rip the thing to shreds as soon as this meeting was over and done with. The sound of ripping material would always remind him of ripping Karina's panties off her. What a sight that was. Easy, big guy, his wolf warned as the elevator dinged and opened, letting him out onto the top floor of Psy Financial. Right, he couldn't be thinking of his mate as he headed into a merger meeting. Hell, he had to keep his wits about him. He was so turned around by Karina, he could have sworn he smelled her jasmine scent all around him. He was so smitten, he was starting to lose his mind over her. Smelling her when she wasn't even around wasn't a mate sense he was familiar with. A young woman clad in a blue dress rushed to him but stopped several feet away from him, struggling with the massive arrangement of flowers she was carrying. Mr. Amana, I'm Casey, Miss Sai's executive assistant. Please follow me. I'll come back here to guide the rest of your team to the conference room as they arrive. Her eyes slid toward the elevator as if she expected a whole army to descend on them. He frowned at her, confused by her apprehension. Perhaps not everyone was pleased about this merger. The rest of my team. I am the team. He rolled his eyes at his own words. Good lord, that sounded way cockier than I wanted it. I just meant there is no team. Only me. We at Amana Industries wholly believe that the companies we buy can trust us, just like we can trust them. A team of lawyers just sends the wrong message. Casey nearly tripped under the weight of the flower arrangement. Oh, 
Well, isn't that nice? She motioned him inside a massive conference room where a slew of people waited for him. Lawyers, by the look of them. Sorry, Casey mouthed to him. I'll just let the boss know you've arrived. She retreated, still holding the flowers. Thanks, he said as he settled into a chair facing the team of lawyers. Not one of them lifted their heads from their devices to acknowledge his presence. Shall we begin? A voice he would recognize as well as his own asked. Navy's head shot up, but he didn't need to see her to know it was Karina. Or, as the paperwork named her, Kay Sai. Oh, shit! His wolf howled. Oh, shit was about right. Just what in the fuck was happening? His heart dropped, cold sweat breaking over his brow and down his spine. Karina looked at him, her face a mask of shock and horror. Her mouth opened, closed, opened, closed, on and on again as he tried to find the right words to say to her under the strange circumstances. Karina shook her head and huffed out a breath. Is this a fucking joke? She crossed her arms over her breasts, almost as if she could shield them from him, as if those creamy red peaks hadn't been in his mouth and his hands all night long. She looked lovely in a stunning red skirt and blouse. Her legs were long for days, and he knew what it felt like to have them wrapped around his waist as he pumped in and out of her. Navy, she roared. Answer my damn question. Question? His voice was hoarse as he tried to explain to himself what had just happened. Is this a fucking joke to you? N no, not at all. Everybody get the hell out of here right fucking now. Her command was immediately obeyed with the lawyers filing out with as much speed as they could. As soon as they were alone, Karina slammed the conference room door shut and pushed hard against his chest. He stumbled back, catching her by the elbows to steady him, to steady her, to make sure he wasn't hallucinating her and this moment. Did you seduce me and fuck me to prove a point or something? What? He balked. Did you fuck me to fuck me over? She took great care to enunciate every syllable. Every word seemed to make her angrier. No, of course not. Up until the second you walked in, I had no idea you were the one I was meeting. All I knew from the paperwork was the name Kay Sai. I didn't know... You didn't know either. It seems... He sighed. It looks like this has been one big cock-up. I'll say... Explain yourself. I can't, I swear. My brother sent me here because he was recently ma- He stopped short. Married. Committed to a new and very important relationship. I only found out I was coming to San Diego a little while ago. I didn't lie when I said I don't like working for the family business. I didn't see any of the paperwork that had your full name. You have to believe me. I've heard about things like this, you know. People getting screwed over by invading companies. What, did you think you could have your cake and eat it too? Thought to yourself you could fuck me before firing me? Firing you? He shook his head. Karina, I know this has been quite a shock for both of us, but I promise you I had no idea who you are. I don't believe you. This is all too convenient. She slapped a hand over her open mouth. Oh my fuck. When your family members met with my dad, he told them all about the shopkeeper's library. That's how your sister knew I would be there. Do you have someone trailing me? Is that how you knew I was there? Are you spying on me? This sounds insane. I'm insane, she roared. No, that's not what I said. Navy swallowed hard and pulled at his tie. For someone who doesn't like confrontation, you sure are doing a good job of it right now. Oops. Wrong thing to say. He might as well have told a very pregnant jewel to calm down while dangling an extra dry martini and a plate full of fresh sushi in her face. Karina looked that mad. You were doing recon on me. I knew it. You were hoping to what? Seduce me? Learn all of my weaknesses to use them to your advantage? Is that it? Karina, I am sure that if we call our fathers, they'll be able to explain all of this. You really should have mated her last night, or at least told her she's our mate. Then none of this would be happening. Navy knew that wasn't true. His wolf was being naive, as only animals can be. He shook his body out, hoping to clear his head. 
Look, Karina, we need to sit down and talk about this. I promise you that our meeting in the bookstore was a pure coincidence. Did I learn about the shop from my sister, who most likely heard it from your father? Yes, but I didn't know you were the person heading up the merger. I had no idea who you are until just now. I know we're still newly acquainted, but I would hope that you know me better than to think I would deceive you in such a reprehensible way. Honestly, right now, I don't know what to think. All I do know is that you need to leave. Right now. If the merger is still to happen, I don't want to deal with you. And please be warned that I want lawyers present. Navy took a deep breath as he tried to find a way to fix this. Banks and his father wouldn't be happy with him that he had fucked this up so badly. All he had to do was come to town, sign the final papers with the CEO, and boom, a newly acquired company. Easy. Only it hadn't been. He had to fix this, and fast. He couldn't lose the merger and his mate all in one fell swoop. Don't. Please don't make me go until we figured this out. I can't look at you right now without thinking of everything we did last night. I feel so... violated. You came inside of me last night and this morning. I had your dick in my mouth. Had I known you were going to turn into such a jerk, I would have bitten the damn thing off. She pointed for the door. Goodbye, Mr. Amana. He opened his mouth again, but she turned her back to him. He was defeated, dejected. One word rang out in his head. Violated. The very last thing his mate should ever feel. Evidently, he was fucking up really badly. Not only had he hurt his mate deeply and profoundly, but he had also managed to not protect her. That was one of the most important things a mate had to do. Protect. Keep. I'm very sorry, Karina. This isn't how this was all supposed to happen. If you ever want to give me a chance to explain, you have my information. Inside of his head, his wolf lost his mind, howling and tearing away. Navy wanted to turn around, take Karina in his arms, and make her understand that he wasn't the nefarious person she was making him out to be. But he wouldn't. She had a shock, and this was clearly a very emotional time for her. As he made his way to the elevator, down to the ground floor, and hailed a cab, he replayed their conversation in his head. Karina did mention that she loved working with her father, despite the fact it wasn't her dream job. The merger was making her feel like she was losing her father, and there he was, walking into the situation as a man who had learned a lot of information from her. It didn't look good. At all. The worst part? He didn't even know how to fix it. Chapter 11 Karina Karina stood in the conference room seconds after her life imploded. Or, you know, whatever it was that she should call this fucked up moment. How often did this happen? Meet a handsome stranger in a bookstore. Spend the day and night together. Have the best sex of your life. All to only discover the next morning that he is the asshole responsible for buying your family's business. Karina knew her reaction was aggressive, but she really didn't know what to think. She was naive and a little bit gullible. How else would her college boyfriend cheat on her left, right, and center while she remained ignorant of this for weeks, months, a year? She wanted to believe that Navy had no idea who she was, but she also knew that there was just no way. There had to be a moment where he clued in. You didn't, her dumb brain reminded her. She grunted at the unhelpful remark. She didn't need lip especially not from herself. It was true she hadn't caught on, but they hadn't exchanged last names. They both mentioned working in something near to financing, but not with enough details to realize what was happening. Hey, Karina, Casey said in a soft voice, pushing through the door she slammed after Navy left. Are you okay? Do you need me to get anything? 
I don't know. Can you get me a bottle of red wine and some Xanax? I need to chill the fuck out. Casey sighed and pulled out one of the chairs for Karina before taking a seat of her own. Want to tell me what's going on? Where does it hurt? Everywhere, huh? Not really, no. It's embarrassing. What I want is to go home, take the longest shower, even if it's not ecologically responsible, and wash away the last two days out of my mind. Her assistant gave her a tight smile. Okay, you go do that and take care of yourself. Seriously, go home. Bask in the glory of that gorgeous condo of yours. I can try to get a hold of your dad so we can figure out whatever has happened here. No, I'll tell my dad. You just... I don't know. Karina massaged her temples. You just hold all the calls from Amana Industries. Have the legal team go over the merger papers again. See if there is anything that was missed the first ten times they went over it. We need to get out of this deal. Well, as much as I would love not to merge with another company, you need your dad's approval for that. He's still the owner, isn't he? It's really too bad he is selling this company out from under you. Karina frowned. Hey, we talked about this, Casey. It's a merger. A deep sigh. Wow, her assistant was taking it harder than her. And she hadn't been fucked, literally, by the enemy. Whatever you say, boss. Just feels like... Casey scrunched up her face and waved off her thought. Never mind. What should we do about this mess? Karina didn't need to hear her staff members' fears and qualms. At least not today. She'd deal with it later. I'll deal with my father, but meanwhile, I need you to get legal on this. See if we can back out. Karina rattled off a million other things she needed Casey to do if she was going to miss the next few days of work to get her head on straight again. She wanted to call her father right away and tell him everything. But that would mean telling her parents that she had a one-night stand. There wasn't anything wrong with that. Normally. But she didn't want to explain this to her parents. Not now? Probably never. Hey guys, so guess what? I literally slept with the enemy, and now I don't want to merge the businesses. So how's about you canceling that retirement you seem to be so excited about? Good with everyone? Great. Yeah, that would not go over well. Karina rushed to her office to grab her purse before she made her way home. She had plans to bathe until she ran out of hot water. Then she would call her best friend Mackenzie and demand that they spend some quality time doing girly things until her heart stopped aching. Until she stopped burning with embarrassment. As soon as she saw her condo door, Karina heaved a sigh of relief. It was short-lived. The door was slightly ajar. All kinds of warning bells rang in her mind. Using her keychain as a weapon, she slowly made her way to the door. She pushed it a bit more open to squeeze by. Maybe in her hurry to get to the office this morning, already running late, she had forgotten to close it and lock it properly. That was insane, of course. She wasn't that distracted. Only she was. Hello? She shouted to her belongings. I've called the police. Huh, that's actually a good idea. Maybe I should have done that. Show yourself, but know that I am armed. But of course, her little keychain wouldn't do much. The damage to her condo was already done. The place was in complete disarray. Someone had broken in and done a fairly good job at turning it upside down. The television was smashed and lying next to her broken coffee table. The couch had been murdered. Someone seemed to have taken a knife to it multiple times. Large gashes had destroyed the cushions and slashed at the walls. Almost as if someone had loosened a wild animal in her small home. It was crazy. 
she didn't have anything valuable. Who could have done this? And why? Could it be? No. That was pure insanity. Why would the Amanas send someone to mess with her home? What was their end game? Get one of the sons to fuck her while one of the others destroyed her home? What did they want? For her and her father to just hand over their company for free? Is that how the Amanas had gotten to be so rich and so powerful? Everyone was just terrified of them because they used dirty tactics to get what they want? With no answers, Karina did the only thing she could do. She called the police. While she waited for them to show up, she ignored six calls and text messages from Navy. She tried to call her parents multiple times with no luck. The texts weren't even going through. By the time the officers showed up, she was half convinced that they should check on her parents because whoever did this might have killed them. The cops looked at her like she had lost her mind. Instead of taking the threat seriously, the female officer asked if there was someplace safe she could stay. I can go to my best friend's place, yes, but I'm serious. You need to check on my parents. They aren't answering their phones. And really, we're having some issues with our business. I think it might be related. You really need to check on this unless you want my dead body on your hands. Miss, are you saying you're a danger to yourself? Karina rolled her eyes. No, of course not. If you don't want to do a wellness check on my parents, I'll do it myself. Um, yo, hold on. The other police officer held up his hand while hiding the other behind his back. We will check on the parents. Take the info, would you, partner? Oh my god. Karina's heart dropped. What is it? What have you found? There was a note pinned to the fridge. I'd say you might want to stay with a friend and make sure you give us the right info for your folks. Please just tell me. I'm afraid this is an ongoing investigation now. All you need to focus on right now, miss, is to get to someplace safe, okay? Why does it feel like I'm missing something? She asked the officers. Probably because you are, the woman responded with a wince. How about you give me a list of all your potential enemies? Karina sighed. I didn't tip my mailman last year. I don't think he likes me. Apart from that, the only people who stand to get anything out of me are the Amanas. The woman frowned. From Amana Industries? Karina nodded. Oh, okay. I'll let my partner know. You get to your friend's place and stay safe. Can I see the note? I would have seen it for myself if I had done a bit more exploring of my own damn house before I called you in. Trust me, it's probably for the best you don't see, the cop assured her with a tight smile. But whoever did this was targeting you. It seems... She glanced around the room. Personal. Be safe out there. Karina refused a police escort to Mackenzie's place when she left her condo. She left her own little safe haven, feeling like she had just lost everything. Business, home, heart. Sanity was definitely next on that list. Two hours and a full pint of ice cream later, Karina didn't feel any better. Sprawled on Mackenzie's couch, she licked the spoon, wishing she hadn't devoured the whole thing so quickly. Now she was out of ice cream, and all she had left was... Well, in truth, she didn't even know what she had left except the promise of an oncoming stomachache. Mixing all that dairy with heavy red wine sure wasn't doing her any favors, but she didn't care. Not just then, anyway. There was too much happening in her head and heart, for that. Her parents still hadn't answered her calls, and there was no word yet on what the cops had discovered at her place, or if they got hold of her mom and dad. Surely, if the police had busted down their door for a wellness check, her parents would have called her to make sure she was safe, or, at the very least, let her know they were safe. 
Aside from that, she had no idea when she would be able to make her way back home to pick up her clothes and other stuff. There was a whole mess of stuff she had to take care of. Like, hire someone to fix her door and buy new furniture once her insurance decided if her stuff was worth replacing. It was a lot. Her day, which had been so promising, starting in the arms of a man she let herself believe could turn into something serious, had gone from bad to worse to downright tragic. Karina was running low on patience and cool. She was one bad news away from going on a tear. This whole day has been weird. Casey dropped coffee on herself and had to take my backup outfit for starters. I don't like that woman, Mackenzie pulled a face. She's snobby. Karina rolled her eyes. You don't like anyone. Besides, you're just mad that she vetoed your restaurant for the Christmas party. Mackenzie nodded. Exactly. What kind of exec assistant doesn't want to support her boss's best friend's restaurant? Karina sighed. I don't... No. I bet you she wanted to wear your clothes because she's obsessed with you or something. She's single white femaling you. She giggled at her own silliness. She's not. She's the best assistant ever. She's literally the only person I trust at the office. She has all my work passwords. And you know why? Because she is reliable. She was really freaked out about the merger. I think I am too. Maybe that's why I flipped my shit on Navy. Her phone dinged, making her grunt. To add insult to all this injury, Navy also hadn't stopped texting with all kinds of explanations and apologies. She didn't read a word of it. Why would she? The whole thing was all so weird. Mackenzie agreed. Explain what happened again. Maybe I'm too tipsy to get it. I need to sober up if I'm gonna run my kitchen properly tonight. Give me that bag of popcorn. Karina did just that, stuffing a handful in her mouth. After another gulp of her drink, she recounted, once again, the whole Navy thing. Mackenzie listened carefully, slurping wine loudly between bites. Figures that the first time you get laid in a long time ends up being like this? No offense. You're right. Mackenzie sat up. Oh my God, do you know what you should do? Go to his hotel and confront him. Demand to know the truth. She immediately deflated. But maybe don't, because he might be the one who is responsible for the break-in. I know, Karina said, grabbing her phone. She flipped through her contacts and clicked on the number she had entered from the file paperwork she read just before the meeting from hell. She added everything she had on the Amana Corporate HQ so she could send email and snail mail when she complained about how badly they operated. She had no plans to make their merger easy on them. Time to get that started. Hello, Mr. Banks Amana? This is Karina Sai speaking. I just want to know what kind of business you run. Sending your brother to seduce me and then getting someone else to break into my home? Did you kidnap my parents? I've already gone to the police. Miss Sai? The man asked on the other line. Are you all right? No, and I blame stupid Navy with his stupid eyes and stupid reading. Of course, it was then that Karina realized she was behaving like a petulant teenager and not a mature businesswoman. She tried to suppress her wine-fueled hiccup and straightened her back as if Banks could see her. All I mean to say, Mr. Amana, is that I don't appreciate how your company is handling this merger. Your brother tried to manipulate me by using a non-professional approach. I don't know who is responsible for the break-in, but if this is your way of trying to intimidate me to get the company full out instead of merging, I can assure you it won't work. I don't put up with bullies. Someone broke into your home, Mr. Amana said. Miss Sai, is my brother with you? What? Of course not. He... Listen to me very carefully, Miss Sai. I am sending a car to your location. I need you to get into that car and go straight to my brother's hotel. Is that clear? 
Karina looked down at her phone in pure shock. This was hardly how she thought the conversation would go. She hit the speaker button to let Mackenzie hear. Miss? Banks sounded serious, concerned even. This might be one of our competitors at work. Navy will protect you. Get to him. Now. No, I'm not going back to his room. Oh, shit. Had she just told him that she'd been there already? Miss Sai, I know you have no real reason to trust me, but I can assure you, this is not how we do business. Something is going on. Let us keep you safe until it's figured out. Mackenzie gave her the thumbs up. Fine, she conceded, hiccuping. But I'm not happy. I can assure you, this is not Amana Industries doing, but Navy will make it right. Get to him. Now. She clicked off the phone as Mackenzie poured more wine. Karina mumbled, I think the Amanas are trying to help me, but I don't know why they would. Mackenzie shrugged. I don't know. Maybe they are good guys. Karina sighed and wobbled her way outside to wait for the car. Navy had better not say one word to her or she'd puke on his shoes. She might do that anyway. Chapter 12 Navy Navy paced his hotel suite. He'd done it so many times, he was pretty sure he was wearing a hole through the expensive and thick carpeting. Not that it mattered for a second. What mattered was that his mate was furious at him, and he had no idea how to fix it. How could he? He had to somehow prove that he had no idea who she was when they randomly met in the bookstore. How could he do that? He tapped his lips as he tried to muddle through his thoughts. It would have been much easier if his wolf wasn't howling up a storm in his head. The animal threw all kinds of mean things around, making all sorts of threats and hurling accusations that didn't help Navy's mood at all. Desperate to quiet the voice in his head, he called the one person who could help him. The family being made aware of his predicament be damned. Karina was more important than his dumbass pride. Well, hello, dear brother, Jewel answered, sounding way too chipper. How did you hear about the bookstore? That's no way of saying hello, she said in a huff. Answer the question, Jewel. Oh, wow, Navy's being all assertive. This is a new look for you, dear. Store, how, explain, she laughed. I heard about it from Jonathan Sai, the owner of the business you're meant to absorb under the Amana umbrella. Why? In what context did he mention it? Why does it matter? It just does. Tell me. Fine, weirdo. I was just telling him how much you love to read and adore going into all these obscure little bookshops no one but hipsters frequent, and he said his daughter was the same. He mentioned the bookstore, and I thought I would let you know about it. So this wasn't any kind of setup. Jewel sighed. Look, Mr. Sai is a good man. He is also a very good father. He knows his daughter isn't really into her job. He wants her to have more time to be herself. She only does it because she likes spending time with him and working with family. Sort of like you. Navy swallowed, gulping loud as he fell on the couch. I didn't realize you had noticed. Please, Jewel scoffed. It's really hard not to notice. You sulk around the office, and you grumble when you have to do anything that cuts into your precious alone time. So maybe I sent you to that bookstore, hoping you would run into Miss Sai. I was kind of hoping it would be a mate thing. You know, you've been single this whole time because you were in the wrong city and all that. Jewel gasped. Oh my god, was I right? Did I have a pregnant psychic moment? Is the Sai lady your mate? I'm not answering that. But you should know that playing with people's lives like that isn't nice, Jewel. You better kick the habit before your kids are grown. She burst into a fit of laughter. You tell me that when you have pups of your own. You'll want to play in their lives just to make sure they don't hurt themselves. Or let a good opportunity pass them by, so spill. The merger didn't go down. There. That had to distract her. Oh, shit. Why? What happened? 
How could you fuck this up? Banks is going to have your head on a platter for screwing up this deal. His phone beeped, telling him another call was coming in. He glanced at the phone's screen to see Banks speak of the devil. He'd have to wait. Navy couldn't handle both of his siblings at the same time. Navy replied, Well, he'll have to get in line. Okay, now I'm officially worried. Tell me what happened. Navy sighed and almost didn't tell his sister anything, but of course he relented in the end, glossing over the naughtier bits. Well, well, well. I knew there was something there. I could sense it, Jewel said knowingly. So why don't you just show up at her door with a bouquet of flowers and a nice bottle of wine and explain? I'll call her. Tell her that it was me trying to play matchmaker. Once you explain the whole mate thing, it'll all work itself out. Actually, I think that might complicate matters more than anything. Fuck that. You need to be honest with her. Obviously, she has a thing about lying. Do not lie to women. Ever. I didn't. Fair. But now, do you want me to tell you how to fix it? No, I feel like this is one of those things I have to fix myself, but thanks for the offer, Jewel. And I guess I should thank you for bringing her into my life, even though it didn't work out. Just do me a favor and hold off telling our fearless leader. I'll let him know as soon as I figure out how to clean up this mess. He clicked off the call to hear a loud banging sounded at the door. He frowned, immediately smelling jasmine. His heart began to race as he recognized the scent. He rushed to the entrance and swung the door open. Karina, he sighed, so damn relieved to see his mate. Only she didn't look so good. Oh, she was as lovely as ever because she was her and she was his, but her mascara was no longer neat but melting under her eyes. Her lower lip trembled as if she were moments away from crying. Unless she had been crying. Oh, love, I'm so sorry for all of this. I never meant for any of this to happen. You have to believe me. I didn't... She didn't try to interrupt him, but pushed into the suite, slamming the door behind her. Darling, is everything okay? Did you or did you not get someone to break into my home and destroy all of my stuff? Navy couldn't decide who had the first reaction, him or his wolf. The hair on his arm stood on edge. What do you mean, break into your home? After you left my office, I went home to... She waved her hand at him. To deal with your bullshit. But I didn't get to go home. Instead, I found that my home had been broken into and that someone trashed the place. Long, deep gashes on everything. And a note. A threat, apparently. But the police didn't even let me see what was written on it. The police? She nodded, her head moving fast but sloppy. Are you... He sniffed the air. You're drunk. Yep. I went to my best friend's house and I started drinking to get over you. Which is really fucking stupid because there isn't anything between us. One day and one night doesn't make a relationship, but that doesn't mean I'm not hurt by your... She stopped. Are you making the room spin? Um, no, love. That would be the booze. You're making the room spin. Navy rushed to her side and was grateful that she didn't fight him off as he helped her settle on the couch. She threw her head back, looking at the ceiling. When I buy new furniture, remind me not to buy a moving couch. Not a fan. Navy grabbed the hotel phone and ordered water, sports drinks for the rejuvenating electrolytes, and all manners of bread and crackers. He bribed the staffer with a very hefty tip if it arrived within the next ten minutes with a few painkillers. As he waited for the delivery, he sat on the edge of the couch, watching Karina as she took deep breaths. Her drunken meditation was interrupted by all kinds of ideas and nonsense. From a wild animal being set free into her condo, to him being part of a secret group set to destroy the father-daughter relationship. And there was also something about good dick, but he didn't listen to that part. Okay, so he definitely listened and tucked the knowledge away to be dealt with at a later time. It was important because Karina did seem to care for him, even though she was confused about how events had transpired. He echoed that confusion now. That there should be a break-in at her house didn't sit well with him, but the tidbit about the wild animal had him on high alert. It sounded like his mate had received a visit from a very destructive shifter. But why? 
he would get to the bottom of it as soon as he got Karina watered, fed, and in bed to sleep off the booze. It took some doing, of course. Christ, woman, how much did you have to drink? She shrugged. I don't know, but red wine and ice cream don't super go together. If I have a hangover, I fully blame you. I hope you know. Yes, I know, love. It'll be well warranted, too. I'll get everything squared away. Navy tucked her into his bed, turned off the light, and closed the blinds before retreating to the living room. The first call he needed to make was to his brother. Something in all of this didn't quite line up, and he would make it right if it was the last thing he did. When Navy grabbed his phone, he noticed he had several missed calls. Most were from Banks, but soon they alternated between his older brother and Jewel. This didn't bode too well. He was sure of it. He quickly dialed Banks' number. What the hell are you playing at? Banks barked into the phone. I'm not sure. It depends on what you already know. As it turns out, Banks' Amana already knew quite a bit. Not only had Jewel spilled the beans on the whole mate thing, but apparently Karina had called him in her drunken state to complain about the state of the merger and Navy's behavior. I've already called the police. They didn't believe Karina when she said her parents were missing, but I've convinced them otherwise. Let me get this straight, Navy spoke through gritted teeth. You and Jewel heard about this book-addicted young woman who was heading up the merger for her father, and you sent me here in hopes that she was my mate. Meanwhile, another pack of shifters had their eyes on the business, and they tried to sabotage the merger by trashing Karina's place and kidnapping her parents. Well, that part I don't know. All I know is that the merger was called off because Karina is mad at you. Didn't my whole thing with Annika teach you anything? The second you don't come clean about the whole mate thing is the second shit goes sideways. Now, unless you want me to take a plane down to you and fix this... Don't, Navy growled. This is my mate's life. Her parents' life. I'll do what needs to be done. Good, Banks responded with more than a hint of pride. I've already called our contact at Interpool. There's no way to know if this whole thing is international, but I have on good authority that Agent Amy Porath is very well versed in all things shifters. She hopped on a plane the second I called her. Lucky for us, she was already in California for some other business. You can expect her support. About the merger. Don't worry about that right now, Banks assured him. Focus on your mate and her family, and once all of that is settled, we'll revisit the merger. Maybe by then you'll have told Karina all about shifters, and she'll be more than happy to be your mate. Keep me posted. Will do. Navy hung up and went back to the bedroom. Karina snored softly as she slept off the copious amounts of booze she drank. He couldn't exactly wait for her to wake up to see if she knew anything that could help them find her parents, and whoever was responsible for the break-in at her place. He had some work to do. But Banks was right. Navy had to be honest about shifters the second Karina woke up. It was bound to be an eventful evening. Chapter 13 Karina Karina didn't know where she was, but wherever it was had the softest pillows. She stretched out, feeling like she was missing something. She didn't remember going to bed, but she did remember being very angry at someone very important. Someone really hot, too. She sat up in the huge bed, her hand going to her spinning head. Oh, she remembered now. Navy fucking Amana. The best day of her life the best sex of her life, and then all of it came crashing down when she discovered Navy was behind the merger. There was her trashed condo and her maybe missing parents. She scanned her surroundings and immediately realized where she was. Navy's hotel suite. She could have shouted out for him, annoyed as she was. Instead, she marched right out of the bedroom on the hunt for the man who plied her with water, electrolytes, and painkillers 
before setting her down for a nap to sleep off the booze. Who even did that? Navy's behavior wasn't consistent at all. Between what he had shown her of himself during their day-long date, to how the entire merger meeting had gone, Karina couldn't seem to figure out what his game was. You're awake. Navy jumped to his feet, pushing away from the glass dining room table. His laptop was opened, and there were papers scattered across the tabletop. How are you feeling? He approached her, arms at the ready, but he stopped seconds before he could have taken her into his arms, much to her regret. Are you okay? Hurt? His eyes scanned her body as if he could spot the damage done to her heart in the supercharged last 24 hours. I'm fine, thanks to you. She crossed her arms to keep herself from reaching out to him. I think it's time we had a very open and honest conversation about what is going on right now. I agree. He gestured for the living room. Please, after you. Can I get you anything? She shook her head before settling on the enormous sofa. Navy sat beside her, his eyes still scanning her for any trouble. Shall you start? he asked. I think it's best you do. He cleared his throat. Right, of course. I think we need to start at the very beginning. Now, be warned, love. This gets a little odd. She arched a brow at him, silently telling him that she didn't appreciate his understatement. I'm a shifter. Karina blinked at him. As in, you shift? What? Funds? People? Work nights? He shook his head. No, my family, we come from a kind of people who can shift into animals. I am from a pack of wolves. My brother Banks is the alpha of our pack. He also leads the family company, as you know. He was the heir once my father retired. He had his eyes set on your family's company because he wanted a good foothold here in San Diego. He approached your father, and from what I can tell, your father was happy to merge. His reasons are his own, and though I think I know his motives, it's not my place to share that. Now, the reason why I'm telling you about the wolf shifter part of my history is... complicated. It appears when your father met with my brother and sister, he mentioned you. Your love of all things books, and especially bookshops. He told Jewel about the shopkeeper's library. She told me about it in hopes that I would go while I was here. She wanted me to meet you because she, like my brother, suspected you were my fated mate. Karina listened to him, listened very carefully and replayed all of it in her head a few times, each time feeling more and more unhinged. Wolf? Shifter? Was this another part of Navy's sick game? She watched him carefully, readying herself to launch a fresh set of verbal attacks and accusations at him. She had no steam, though. She couldn't bring herself to unleash all the anger and animosity she felt. Because, as odd as it was, she knew he was telling the truth. It was written all over him. In the frown pinching his brows together. In the tense set of his shoulders and in his wringing hands. Shit, it was even etched on his breath. In his eyes. On his lips. Explain what a shifter is, she commanded in a very soft voice that betrayed her. He did. Mates, turning into wolves, all of it. Once again, Karina found herself listening, intently glued to his every word. It sounded impossible. It seemed like something out of the world's most twisted fairy tale. Yet, it also made sense. Why the fuck else would she feel such a deep and profound connection to a man she had only just met? Easy. They were literally destined to be together forever. Navy called it fated mates, 
but she would call it soulmates. Karina took a deep breath. She could fight this or accept it as truth just as soon as she had proof. When she said as much, Navy grinned at her. It lacked the confidence and self-assuredness she had started to see as an integral part of him. He got to his feet and made his way to the center of the room. He moved the large marble coffee table out of the way, creating a big empty space right before her as if he were setting a stage. What I'm about to show you isn't something we do or share unless it's with our mates. You don't have to be afraid, okay? She nodded and watched as Navy began to strip out of his clothes. If you think I'm going to fuck you, he chuckled. No, that's not what I'm doing. But if I don't take off my clothes before I shift, they get destroyed. It seems wasteful when I have the time to take off the garments. It was wrong. Dirty. Naughty. Karina had to sit there and watch the hottest man alive strip out of his suit, knowing it wasn't going anywhere but to a strange place. Not exactly super sexy. Once Navy was nude, Karina watched in fascination as the body she knew intimately began to change. The smooth, muscular skin of his body began to sprout fur and shorten, morph into something grotesque and scary. She wanted to rush to his side and try to ease the pain he had to be feeling, but in the end, it was over in a matter of seconds. Then there was a huge black wolf in the middle of the luxury hotel suite. Ain't no thing. This happens all the fucking time. Nothing to see here. The wolf sat back on his haunches and watched her carefully. His big eyes blinked at her, and he inclined his head at her in that way that made it obvious the wolf was actually Navy. Navy was a wolf. Holy fucking shit. The words rushed out of her. She leaped off the couch and approached the wolf, her hand out. He sniffed her fingers, his cold muzzle making her gasp. It's real. It's really you. He held out his paw for her to shake as if they were just meeting for the first time. Karina giggled, but she didn't know if it was out of fear of something similar to terror. It was then that she noticed the claws. Her gasp made her fall back onto the couch, her hands covering her mouth. Navy was back to his very naked human form and rushing to her side in no time at all. Karina, what is it? Are you all right? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to frighten you. She shook her head, taking deep gulps of air into her lungs. I'm not scared of you, but I just realized something about my condo. It looked like a wild animal tore through the place. It wasn't me. I know. You have four huge claws. The damage they could do was the same damage that was on my stuff. She felt herself blanch, and her limbs begin to shake. There are other kinds of shifters, aren't there? She already knew the answer, but she still needed to hear it from him. He nodded. Yes, and judging by what you've described, I would say that it's a feline shifter. Something big, but cat-based. That would be one big-ass fucking kitty, she grumbled. My place is trashed. Why would shifters be after me? Navy shook his head. Honestly, I don't know. Until I get to your place, I won't know what kind of shifters we're dealing with. But I suspect that will give me a good enough clue. Then let's go. She hopped off the couch, ready to go into battle. Navy pulled her back into her seat. Not so fast, love. I don't think it's safe for you to come with me. Not until I know what we're dealing with. He explained that he was getting reinforcement from an Interpol officer, but that didn't matter. In the end, her parents were missing, and she didn't know why. I need to be part of this, Navy. What do you think will happen? You'll lock me up in here? He averted his gaze, basically giving her an affirmative. Well, fuck that shit. 
This is my family. I'm not going to sit by and let you rescue me. But you don't like confrontation. I think this is bound to be a big one. Dangerous, too. So? She crossed her arms. You're not a fan of them either. Maybe together we can actually get this done. Navy shook his head. I don't want to put you in any danger. Then don't leave me alone, she shot back. Or haven't you read enough novels? It's always when the hero leaves the heroine alone that she gets kidnapped by the bad guys. She waited for him to deny it, but they both knew she was right. Fine, you can come with me, but the second we're joined by Agent Porath, you're going to stay with her. Karina patted his shoulder. We'll see. Now put some clothes on, Wolfman. We've got a mystery to solve. She headed toward the door, but turned back to add, We'll discuss the mate thing later. Chapter 14 Navy All told, Navy was surprised. More shocked than anything else. After the disastrous merger meeting and Karina's reaction, he anticipated the whole shifter thing to be a much more complicated conversation. They hadn't even talked about the whole mate thing. Karina only stated offhand that they would discuss it later. But what does that even mean? Because I sort of really need to know. Like, right now. This is torture. Navy didn't know who thought that, him or his wolf. In the end, it didn't really matter. Both of them wanted to know what the future would hold for him and Karina. Apparently, it would have to wait until after they rescued her parents. Fair. Really fair. Didn't mean he had to like it, though. Funny how he went from never wanting a mate or kids to being all turned around. It was solely because he hadn't known how it would feel to be near his mate. To hold her. To kiss her. I could have told you it was going to go down like that, his wolf snickered. Navy pulled on clothes, opting for a pair of shorts and a simple tee. It was hardly his typical clothing choice, but it's not like he often went around chasing after fuck knew what kind of shifters to try to find his potential in-laws and the link to the psi business. Karina paced the small hallways at the entrance of the hotel room, looking up as Navy made his way to her. Are we ready to go? Yes, he answered. But before we do, I want to make one thing clear. If I tell you to do something, you need to listen. You mean to obey, she shot back, crossing her arms. Well, sort of. But only because I want you to come away from this in one piece. Fine, she said, rolling her eyes. I'll be a good little girl. Navy hadn't known her very long, but he could tell that his mate was only humoring him. She was bound to do something dangerous. He would just have to keep a good eye on her while solving this mystery and protecting her. No big deal. He could totally do that. He was a shifter. He was more than up to the task of saving his mate. Navy led them out of the hotel where a rental car waited for them, just a perk of being a high roller in a luxury hotel. He could have asked the concierge for a kilo of cocaine, and he was pretty sure they would have found a way to make it happen. As they settled into the car, he adjusted the driver's seat, and buckling themselves in, tried to get his thoughts in order. Earlier, he had spent the entire time that Karina slept trying to find out what exactly made the psi business a prime target for the shifters who attacked Karina's place and maybe kidnapped her parents. He knew he had to measure his words carefully as he began to ask Karina about the company and how it came to be. Do you happen to know how your father got to the capital to start the financing business? Karina nodded. Yeah, when I was a kid, he took out a pretty big loan. I remember my parents being really stressed out about it. Dad worked a lot, basically all the time just so that he could pay it back. I could tell it stressed them out. I didn't like seeing them fight, so as soon as I was old enough, I started asking to go in to help him. I figured if I pulled my weight and helped with the running of the business, Dad would be able to spend more time at home, and my parents wouldn't argue as much. She pointed ahead. Turn there. 
he gave her a tight smile as he drove toward her condo. Something didn't add up. There was no paper trail of the loan in all the research he and the company's accountants had done. One day, Jonathan Sy just magically had the funds to open his financing institution. Something didn't smell right. Is it at all possible that your father went to a loan shark to get what he needed to start his business? Corina didn't like that question. Are you fucking joking? Of course he didn't. My dad never did anything illegal. He shuffled uncomfortably in his seat. Right, but there is no proof of a loan. It might have been done off the official books by a family friend. You know, when people go to a financial company like we have, they do their research. If there had been a loan, it wouldn't have looked good. Dad wouldn't have been able to get clients. And if my family knew that, they wouldn't have decided to merge the businesses. Do you know who this family friend could be? Karina shrugged. Turn here. I mean, Mom and Dad have a lot of friends. That hotel you're staying at? My godfather owns it. He was shocked. Your parents know Elliot Jones? He's your godfather? Uncle Elliot, yeah. He blew out a breath. Shit. You call Jones Uncle Elliot? Do you have any idea who he is? Sure I do. Don't say that he is your uncle. That isn't an answer. Well, I don't know what else you want me to say. That's who he is to me. Elliot Jones and his family are shifters. They're leopards. Karina gasped and turned in her seat, despite her seatbelt, to stare him down. He could hardly look away from the street to stare right back at her, but his silence spoke volumes. Are you telling me that I have been around shifters my whole life without even knowing it? He nodded. And I don't want to hurt your feelings right now, but Jones isn't exactly known for his respectfulness of the laws. I'll also point out... He took a deep breath before going on. Leopards have claimed this city as their territory. She fumed in her seat, crossing her arms. You're insane! My godfather did not send his people to attack my condo. Turn left. He helped me with the down payment for it when I graduated from college. He was at my college graduation! Hell, he even offered to host the party at his house. My uncle isn't behind this. What, did he kidnap my parents? People he has traveled with? No. She shook her head. No, just no. It can't be. You didn't turn. Oh, shit. Had she told him to turn? He made a U-turn. I'm not saying it's him. I'm just stating facts right now. But I don't know who else it could be. I'm not familiar enough with San Diego to know who the major shifter families are, but I do know that the Jones Pack is strong and definitely resourced. The car made the next corner. Well, if they are resourced, as you say, then why would they come after me? My dad must have paid out that loan years ago. Your family was merging with us. You saw our financial reports. You know we're doing fine. Better than fine. We're doing fucking great. And maybe that's the point. Maybe your uncle didn't want your father to merge with us. Not only because it puts your dad in bed with another shifter pack, but maybe your father's business is needed by Jones somehow. Stop. Just stop accusing Uncle Elliot of this. I'm telling you, he wouldn't put my parents or me in danger. Okay, Navy said with a sigh, knowing the conversation wouldn't get anywhere from this point on. But there was every chance Karina would have to face the facts soon enough. How bad can Uncle Elliot be if you're staying at his hotel? That's a fair question. It's just a shifter thing. Because I'm in Jones City, I stay at his hotel as a sign of respect and deference. It's a show of good faith that proves I'm not after his territory. Something that would seem like an empty gesture if he knew we were moving in on your family business. She pointed again, and Navy parked the car in the visitor's parking lot of the condo complex, then turned in his seat to give Karina a sorry look. I know you don't like hearing any of this. And I promise you, love, it's not my intention to hurt you or to make this any harder. I've had very little time to research all of this. I will know more as we continue to dig, but I'll be honest. Right now, Elliot Jones is the most likely suspect behind all of this. Whatever. She opened the car door and quickly walked away from the car. Not wanting to let her out of his sight, Navy rushed after her. If her godfather was responsible, then he had to keep a close eye on her. 
Karina's guard would be lowered the second she spotted the other shifter, and he couldn't have that. He had to make sure she was on high alert. Even if it meant doubting a man she had known as an uncle her whole life. Navy had one goal in all of this, to protect Karina Sai, at all costs, even their budding relationship. Chapter 15 Karina It was a lot to take in. Uncle Elliot? Behind all of this bullshit? It just wasn't possible. Navy might be a hot, smart book reader, but he was way off base with this theory. Elliot Jones might be a shifter, but he wasn't the cause. Karina didn't want to believe it. Her brain tried to replay her whole life, every single moment that she had been around Uncle Elliot. But no matter how suspicious a thing looked, she couldn't let it be tarnished. Her heart clenched when she spotted the door to her condo. The police had managed to close the door, but they had taped it off with yellow caution tape. It made her home look like a crime scene. It sort of is. The thought made her shiver. Navy placed a hand on her back, and she was immediately energized by his touch. She leaned into it, letting it soothe the dull ache inside. She missed her parents. She worried for them. She really hoped they were somewhere on the water in their sailboat and had just been out of cell range for a long time. They did have a satellite phone, but maybe it was dead. Maybe Mom dropped it in the water after one too many drinks. That had happened before. It could happen again. If you don't want to go in, you don't have to. You can stay right here. Navy motioned for the door. What happened to not leaving me alone in case the bad guys come for me? But really, what were the chances they'd come back to her condo after trashing it? Slim. The damage was done. I'll go in, she said. I've already seen the devastation. It's not like my heart can break any more than it already has. Navy nodded and forced his way into the condo, ducking under the strip of yellow tape. Karina watched in fascination as he sniffed the air. What are you doing? she asked, ducking under the tape. One of the perks of being a shifter. Aside from shifting into an actual wolf? she interrupted. He chuckled despite the tense situation. Yes, there are other perks beyond being able to shift into a wolf. Heightened senses are quite convenient. Hearing and smelling. I can smell all the different people who were in here. Lots of cops, yes, but there is also the distinct scent of... He sniffed the air again, walking away from her and heading for the living room. He spotted the destroyed couch, claw marks and all, and gave another whiff. He turned to face her with the seriousness the moment demanded. You won't like what I have to say. It smells like leopards, which is exactly what Uncle Elliot and his pack are. Navy nodded. Yes, I'm sorry. She shrugged. It doesn't mean anything, right? There could be a simple explanation, like another pack of leopards in the area. Navy didn't say anything, but he swallowed and kept still. Too still, as if it was physically difficult for him to keep quiet about his own thoughts. Oh, for the love of fuck, just spit it out, Navy. Well, one of the things about shifters is that, like animals, we are quite territorial. Jones wouldn't let another pack of leopards operate in his town. Karina sighed and nodded. So this is pointing to Uncle Elliot being responsible for all this? I'm sorry, love. I really am. I wish I had different news for you. Karina pulled her cell phone out and scrolled through her contacts. Karina, Navy warned. What are you doing? She waved him off as the phone started to ring on the other side of the line. It only took a few rings before he answered. Uncle Elliot, it's Karina. 
I'm really scared and super worried. What's happened? He asked, his jovial voice filled with genuine concern. Or at least, it sounded like it was real. No one was that good of an actor, right? He couldn't have been pretending to care for her his whole life. That was just too cruel to speak of. It would also imply that her parents had put her in harm's way. It just didn't make sense. My apartment was trashed, and mom and dad are missing. Have you heard from them? Karina, what are you talking about? Your parents are sailing. Your dad is celebrating his retirement. Didn't they tell you? Well, yeah, sure, but I can't get a hold of them. Don't panic. Your mom probably dropped the sat phone in the water again. Just come by the house. I'll call the police and get your place all squared away. No, no, it's okay. I've already called the cops. And I'm not alone. I'm with my... Her eyes cut to Navy. What the hell was she supposed to say? That she had a shifter mate? On the off chance Navy was right about Uncle Elliot, this would definitely make it pretty damn obvious that she was on to him. I am with my boyfriend. Karina immediately noticed the change in Navy. His chest puffed up, his nostrils flared, and he took a protective step toward her. I didn't know you were seeing anyone, Karina. That's wonderful. When your parents come back from their sale, we should all meet up for dinner. You're safe with this guy? The question threw her. What? Yes, of course. Why wouldn't I be safe? I just mean, if something was to go wrong, this guy could protect you? Why would he need to protect me? Her heart thundered in her throat. Was Uncle Elliot threatening her or warning her? She couldn't tell much beyond the fact he sounded a little freaked out. I'm as safe as can be, she answered, her voice sounding hollow to her own ears. Promise. Okay, good. You know you can call me any time, Karina, day or night. Now I'm gonna try to get hold of your parents. Speak soon. Before she could even think of saying anything in response, Uncle Elliot had hung up. I'm guessing you heard all of that with that shifter hearing of yours? I did, yes. And? And what? he asked, blinking slowly at her. Well, did your shifter senses pick up anything weird? Did your niece senses pick up anything? Navy Amana, stop answering my questions with questions. Tell me what you think. I don't think you're going to like it, and if it's all the same to you, I'd rather not have a fight with my new girlfriend. New girl- She stopped herself short and smiled despite herself. Oh, I see. You heard that part, and what? You think we're, like, together together now? That's typically what girlfriends and boyfriends mean. They're a couple who are very much together. I just said that to explain you to my uncle. I didn't actually mean it. As she spoke the words, Karina kind of regretted them. But really, was it the time to get all up in the semantics of their relationship? Her parents were off somewhere, doing who knew what. Someone had broken into her place and trashed it, and it did seem like that person responsible could be her uncle. Uncle Elliot definitely seemed to be hiding something, but that could just be his shifter protective streak, right? Navy shrugged. Maybe, if he sees you as one of his own. Judging by the sizable frown on his face, he wasn't too pleased that they weren't still talking about their relationship status. Talk about protective. What's our next move then? She asked. From where I'm standing, it looks like we need to figure out if there are other leopard shifters in the area. He nodded. It's very unlikely. Let me just keep sniffing around here. I might spot something the human police missed. Do what you need to. He did, and Karina stayed close to him, trying to look at the devastation of her home through the eyes of a detective. It looks like whoever did this was looking for something she finally said. They turned over every drawer I own. It seems that they only started destroying stuff when they realized they weren't going to find what they were looking for. You know, 
Navy said. I think you're right. Is there anything of value they could have been after? Karina took a second to consider this. Not really. I have a nice place, but I'm hardly hoarding expensive pieces of furniture or pieces of priceless art. How about paperwork from the company? Do you have anything like that here? All that was kept at the office. And we were at the office earlier today. Nothing was amiss, right? Right. A cold shiver made Karina cringe. Hey, when you were in my building, did you smell anything shiftery? Shiftery? He asked with a grin. You know what I mean. She rolled her eyes but smirked right back at him. How could she not? The man was a powerful, sexy force of manliness. It would be pretty damn impossible to not be affected. Especially since she was very well acquainted with what those lips could do. I didn't smell anything, but... He cleared his throat. To be honest, I didn't really smell anything but jasmine. It was downright distracting. Why were you sniffing Jasmine? Do you know her or something? Karina was defensive, immediately hating the idea that Navy thought Jasmine, one of the lawyers, was pretty enough to be noticed. Jealous much? Get over yourself. You said so yourself. He is not your boyfriend. Not a staff member named Jasmine, Navy said as he tried to suppress his laughter. It was a great big fail. He was getting a kick out of her being jealous, the great big jerk. The smell of jasmine the flower. That's what you smell like to me. Oh. Well, at least there was that. Then, oh, as she realized what he was actually saying. Does that shifter sense thing make me smell overly delicious to you or something? Most definitely. The intense look in his eyes when he looked at her was back in full force. It went straight to the core of her as she recalled what it was like to be so completely full of navy. Okay, then. As I said, your scent was definitely distracting. I don't think I could have smelled another shifter. I was too confused. I didn't understand why I smelled you. I thought I was losing my mind for wanting you so much. As it turns out, I wasn't going crazy from wanting you. I was actually smelling you. Karina didn't know what to say to that, or how to answer it. It was a lot. Sweet. Romantic. Even a little... dangerous. The man wanted her that much after only knowing her a little while. But she wanted him just as much. The next thing Karina did didn't make much sense. If someone would have asked her to explain herself, she wouldn't have been able to. She rushed to Navy, closed her arms around his neck, and kissed him. For a second, he was stunned into immobility. But soon, he caught up to what was happening. He cupped her ass and helped her lift off the floor. She wrapped her legs around his waist as she continued to kiss him. His tongue was in her mouth, making her forget everything she had to fix. Her condo, the merger, her possibly missing parents, their unlabeled relationship. All that mattered at that moment was them, kissing, devouring each other like their lives depended on it. And in some way, it sort of did. But it couldn't last, of course. There were too many balls in the air, too many unanswered questions. The annoying sound of a ringing phone ripped them apart. Navy pulled away, breaking the embrace. I need to get that. It could be very important. Yep, she sighed, sliding down. Navy answered his phone, and Karina watched in horror as his face paled. Karina, he said to her with all the seriousness he had. I'm sorry, love. There's been an incident. Your parents' boat has been located on the water, but... He paused, clearing his throat. 
they weren't on it. Chapter 16 Navy Navy ground his teeth together as he tried to settle his breathing. He knew he had to be strong for Karina, but it was hard to do at that moment. He didn't like giving her bad news, but it seemed that since he walked into her office and discovered it was her family business he was absorbing, it was one bad news after the other. This wasn't how it was supposed to go. Finding your mate was supposed to settle your life, not lead from one complication to the other. Karina, I'm so sorry, love. There's been an incident. Your parents' boat has been located on the water, but they weren't on it. His mate stumbled as if her legs could no longer hold her. He reached out and held her. You need to take a deep breath for me, love. It's going to be okay. How? She asked, her voice breaking on a sob. I don't know, he said truthfully, but we'll find them. I'll make it okay. Navy didn't know how he would manage that, but he had to try. Let's get out of here. Karina nodded vaguely. He led her out of her destroyed condo and back to the car. He helped her sit in the passenger seat and knelt by her side. Her eyes were vacant, but threatened tears. Her lower lip quivered while her breathing became more and more unsteady. Karina, love, look at me. She did, so he took her hands in his. I don't know what's going on, but I made a promise to you. I will keep you safe, and I will do anything in my power to find your parents. She nodded once again, as if her voice had decided to leave. Do you need anything? Water? Who called you? It was Banks. He had someone check the marina. The harbor master reported your parents took out the boat yesterday, but never returned. The boat was found not too far from the marina, anchored down. No sign of your parents. Okay. Well, I think it's time we pay Uncle Elliot a visit. Karina, he warned. I don't think that's a good idea. At least, not until we have backup. If we were in New York, I would get some of my pack members to go with us for a show of strength. But I'm alone here. I have to wait until Agent Porath and her team land, okay? He didn't have the heart to pile on even more worries. Seeing as how Uncle Dearest owned the hotel where he was staying, Navy didn't want to go back. It didn't feel safe. He quickly sent a text to Banks, letting him know about that development. His brother would arrange other accommodations. Banks, got you a rental home with an elaborate security system. I'll send you an encrypted email with the address and codes to unlock the door and set the alarms. Change those as soon as you arrive. Navy, thanks. Banks, Agent Porath landing in a couple of hours. Also, forwarding her flight plan. Hang tight until then. Is your mate okay? Navy considered the question for a few moments, watching Karina breathing heavily as she tried to calm herself. He typed up his answer and tucked his phone away. I'm going to take you someplace soothing, okay? Karina didn't answer, but it didn't matter. He would do what was best for his mate right now. She was in shock and worried her parents had met a bad ending. Did I tell you why my dad wants to retire? Why he's merging with Amana Industries? Karina asked a little while later while Navy drove them to a place she would appreciate, one that would help her feel safe. No, you didn't. My parents were sailing a little while ago. They had an accident and they capsized. They both ended up in the hospital. Dad was so scared he thought he was going to die, that he would be gone before spending some quality time with Mom. He felt guilty about working so much. Something about that didn't sit well with him. Your parents were in a sailing accident? Yep, not too long ago. Actually, just before he started talking about the merger. Navy made a non-committal sound, but Karina caught on. What? What is it that you're thinking? Nothing. Look, my parents are probably dead, though I refuse to believe it. It just can't be true. Fresh tears rolled down her cheeks. But really, I don't think you can make this day any fucking worse. If you've got a line on what is happening, please share. He sighed. 
I was just thinking about the timing of it all. How it's pretty damn coincidental that your parents get into a bad scrape, try to sell their business, and then the shit hits the fan. You don't think the accident was an accident at all? I do not, no. She was quiet for a long time. Then why merge the company with Amana? That's a very good question. I'm telling you, we need to talk to my uncle. We'll do no such thing. Not until we have backup. I told you. We're vulnerable right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Karina laid her head back against the seat. Where are you taking me? A place to recharge our batteries for a bit, while we wait for the Interpool agents to land and for Banks to email me a safe location. Navy parked the car in a back alley before running around the car to get Karina's door. He took her shaking hand in his and led her to the front of the shop. Really? She snorted, tears in her eyes and a watery smile. This is where you bring me? It's public, so no one can flat out attack us, and it's where we met. Call me sentimental. I've already called you romantic, and you didn't like it, remember? He grinned. I like it just fine if it helps you, love. Navy pushed through the door, admitting them into the shopkeeper's library. Mrs. Miller sat on her chair, reading a book big enough to need a crane to lift it. The older woman's eyes sparkled when she saw them. Well, you two ended up finding each other after all. A real life happily ever after, bless your hearts. If my husband could see this, he would have hope for the future after all. Hey, Mrs. Miller. Karina gave the owner a smile that didn't reach her eyes. Mrs. Miller immediately noticed and leaped to her feet, as much as a woman in her 90s could jump. What's got you down, dear? Just a little bit of life trouble, Karina answered. Then you've come to the right place. I'll make you a nice cup of chamomile tea. You go on and pick yourself a nice book to read. You can even sit in my chair. Karina gasped. Oh, no, Mrs. Miller. I couldn't. That's your spot. I insist. The older woman nudged her chin out at him, silently ordering him to obey her orders. He complied, because how could he not? He helped Karina settle in the chair and knelt by her side. Tell me what you would like to read right now. Something happy, was the answer. Navy made his way to the romance section, picked out the first thing he saw, and rushed back to his mate's side. Shall I read it for you? Karina nodded. Yes, please. You do have a nice speaking voice. It's soothing. He settled on the ground, his back pressed against the side of the chair. He flipped the book open to the first page and began to read. Karina listened intently as she ran her fingers through his hair. Navy paid close attention to her breathing, and soon enough, he could tell that his mate was much calmer. Mrs. Miller arrived with a cup of tea and handed it to Karina, who slid down onto the floor next to him. You could have stayed where you were. It's good for these old bones to walk around sometimes. Not a chance I'd steal your favorite chair, Karina said after a sip of tea. Thank you for this. You're most welcome. And for my best customer, there's nothing I wouldn't do. Remember that, dear. Now, will you tell me what troubles you? She patted her white hair. This means I'm wise. She motioned to the books. That means I'm full of knowledge. Karina sighed. My parents are missing. Mrs. Miller gasped. Oh, my poor dear girl. I'm so sorry. It's funny. I keep reaching for the phone to call my dad. He would know what to do, but... He's the one you need to find. She nodded. I understand. When you get to my age, it's me people come to for advice. To be fair, there's not much I haven't been through. Missing, you say? Any trace of them? Only an abandoned boat. Isn't that funny? Boat accidents are always used to fake a death. Mrs. Miller shook her head. But I don't think your parents would have done that, leaving you behind. Karina's back straightened. What did you say? Mrs. Miller frowned. Boats are typically used in fiction to fake people's deaths. Why? What are you thinking? Navy asked. Well, quite a bit, actually, but it's all jumbled. Talk it out, dear. Tell us. 
Mrs. Miller encouraged. Okay, it's a little out there, but they do say that life is stranger than fiction, right? What if my parents aren't missing, but have faked their own death? Navy frowned, shaking his head. I don't follow. You said yourself that they might have taken out a loan to start the business. What if they paid, but the bad people wanted more, or whatever the fuck? Karina blushed. Oops. Sorry, Mrs. M. I just mean, whatever else bad people use other folks for wasn't completed. My dad might have told them to shove it, right? So then the accident happened to scare my parents into complacency. Dad didn't want to keep doing business with them, so he figured he could merge with Amana Industries as protection. You know, because he might know about your family's heritage? She meant shifters, of course. Navy nodded along. Okay, keep going. Right, so Dad thought me and the business would be safe with the Amanas on our side. Maybe he and Mom had to make themselves scarce and fake their deaths to keep me out of it. You know, with them being so-called dead and the business under the Amana umbrella, everything Dad cared about would be safe. Karina blinked back tears. Right? This makes sense. It does. Navy didn't think so, but he didn't want to argue. This sounded a lot like a daughter who was trying, at all costs, to convince herself that her parents were alive and well. Oh, dear. That sounds like quite the story you've spun, Mrs. Miller said. Seems like you're dealing with a lot. I am, yes. But, Navy, you didn't say if you agree. What do you think? He placed his hand on her thigh and gave it a good squeeze. I think we need to wait until we have more information before we really know what's going on. I just don't want them to be dead, Karina gasped before sobbing. It broke Navy's heart, but all he could do was take her in his arms and cuddle her until the tears passed. Mrs. Miller watched on, a frown on her aged face. Navy wanted to have all the answers. He wanted to make this right. He wanted to fix it all now. All he had were half-baked theories and no real leads. He hated feeling so damn powerless. He was basically a sitting wolf. For once, he didn't pride himself on being a lone wolf. He needed his family. He needed their support to protect what was his. Luff, Karina, mate of mine, listen to me, he whispered in her ear. No matter what happens next, I want you to know that you will always have me to rely on. I'm not going anywhere. Fat good it did at the moment, but at least they had each other. For now. Chapter 17 Karina Karina cried in public sometimes just like any other human. Sometimes when she went to the movies and the story was sad, she cried. It was natural, and she felt no shame for it. This was different. She sat on the floor of her favorite bookstore in the arms of her one-night stand-turned protector, who was also her wolfmate, as she cried harder and longer than she had ever done before. Karina wanted to shake it off, be a badass and ride into battle like the heroines of her books. But there was no battle to ride into. She didn't know who or what she was fighting. Even more than that, it was her and Navy against whatever threat was ruining her life. She believed him when he said it would be better handled if they were in New York where he would have his whole pack at his side. It was her and him along with a little old woman who fed them tea and chocolate chip cookies. Some team they made. Karina, Navy said, pulling away from her. My phone. The thing rang from somewhere in his pockets. He picked up the call, looking a bit agitated. Agent Porath, this is Navy Amana. Karina wanted to rip her hair out as she listened to Navy talking. Some wolfish hearing would be great right about then. She had no patience to wait until the call ended to know what was going on. So, of course, the call went on and on. 
and fucking on. Navy stood and went to pace the back of the store. Karina wanted to go with him and pace along with him, but Mrs. Miller gripped her hand. It was a sweet gesture, apparently to give her moral support. But Karina was about ready to jump out of her own skin. It's going to be just fine, dear. You wait and see. You'll be just fine. Life is hard, you know. My husband and I went through quite a few hard times in our life, but you'll find that having the right person beside you will always help. Even when he's being an annoying ass, you'll love him because you'll know you can count on him. It'll be the same for him. You've got a good one. Oh, but we're not... together. Not yet, anyway. Nothing is official. Mrs. Miller gave her a wink. So you say, but an old woman knows these things. We can tell when things are going to work out. It's all part of that wisdom and knowledge I was talking about earlier. You might feel like it's silly to think of your relationship at a time like this. But let me tell you, it's just the right time. It's a time of great stress. Notice how he treats you. Is he patient? Kind? Caring? Karina considered this for a moment as she looked back to see Navy pacing some more. I think I get what you're saying. Good. You'll be fine, dear. Just fine. Mrs. Miller took her empty teacup and retreated to the back room as Navy came toward them, sliding his phone into his pocket. Karina, love, the Interpol team has landed. They're touching base with the police here to get some information on your case and the disappearance of your parents. I can go meet with them alone, or you can come with me. It's up to you. Now, if I were the one deciding, I would take you to the safe house and- And wrap me up in bubble wrap. Yes, I know. I need to be involved in this. I have important information. All the business stuff. All the stuff with my uncle. It's all here. She tapped her head. And we won't know what's important until we talk to Agent Porath. Right. So that means you're coming along. He didn't bother asking it as a question, already knowing the answer. Let's go. Navy drove them to the safe house. Apparently, it was all arranged by his brother. Agent Porath and her team would meet them there, and from that point on, they would try to decipher the best course of action. I hate relying on humans for shifter problems, Navy explained. But I'm not sure this is even a shifter problem, really. And it's not my turf. Having a number of wolves descend on San Diego without due cause and going through the proper channels could start an even bigger conflict. We don't need that right now. What we do need is information and backup. Karina nodded along. But really, it felt like she had walked into someone else's life. Nothing really made sense. Mrs. Miller was right about one thing. This would all be a hell of a lot harder without Navy by her side. So what is this whole mate thing? She asked as they turned onto the highway that led out of the town toward a suburban area. Navy glanced at her. I don't think I understand the question. Explain to the human what it means to be mated. Is there a ceremony? Do I have to run naked under the full moon or something? He laughed. Where do you get this stuff? No, Karina, no howling at the moon unless you want to. To be fully mated, that is, to solidify our bond as mates. He cleared his throat. I have to bite you at a crucial time. Crucial time? she asked, genuinely confused by his choice of words. He made a face at the road and blushed till his ears turned pink. Oh, crucial, as in orgasm. Right. He cleared his throat again. It's not like I have to maim you or anything. Just a little nip, enough to break the skin. My God, you shifters are interesting. 
At the time of orgasm, you have to bite your lover? Every time? What? His ears turned even more rosy. No, just the one time. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's not so bad. And then we're bonded? Like, married? Sort of, yes. But it goes beyond that. I can't live without you once we're mated, and I suspect the same would be true for you as well. Wow, that's a very all-or-nothing kind of loving. You've got a lot on your mind, Karina. I obviously don't expect our status to be at the top of your list right now. Well, no, but I had a conversation with Mrs. Miller. She made me realize a few things. That's why I want to apologize for how I reacted in the conference room. I believed the very worst of you, and then I kept on thinking worse and worse. That's not fair to the kind of man you are. I just wanted you to know that I acknowledge my overreaction. Oh? Yeah. You're the kind of man who takes on my problems as your own, even though I've been a bit on the hysterical side. You took me to the bookstore because you knew it would help me calm down and reconnect with my center. You're a good man, Navy Amana, and if we survive this, I would love to be your mate. After such a short time, I wouldn't hold you to it. If you say so, she snorted out a giggle. But I just wanted to make sure you know. You're a good man, and I appreciate everything that you are doing for me right now. Of course, love. Anything. Anytime. He meant it, too. Karina felt it. Chapter 18 Navy The directions to the safe house took them out of San Diego and into a much more suburban area. Banks knew what he was doing. It was way easier to protect a house in his wolf shape, and that wasn't exactly something he could do in the middle of the San Diego downtown area. He owed his big brother a big thanks, especially since he had made a huge fuss about not wanting to come out here in the first place. After her declaration, Karina fell quiet. She watched the town go by in silence, her mind no doubt going faster than the car as she grappled with what her life had become in the last 24 hours. Mates. She offered to be our mate, and you basically turned her down. You're an ass. This is what I've been waiting to hear since we saw her. Navy didn't want to argue with his wolf. Of course, he was overjoyed that Karina was open to the idea of being his mate. But she was talking during a moment of very high stress. She meant it now, but she might not later. Maybe they would find her parents dead. Maybe her beloved Uncle Elliot would be behind it all. That was hardly going to lead to a good happily ever after. He would deal with that later. First, he had to figure out just what the hell was happening in Karina's life. He didn't think her wild theory about her parents faking their death held any water. Yet, his own theory was even more insane. We're here, he announced as he turned down a long street. There were very few houses all sitting on at least an acre of land each. It would give them the privacy they needed. It would be easier to spot an intruder if someone managed to track them down. No one would take Karina from him. Of that, he was sure. She was right about one thing. Don't let the heroine out of your sight. That only led to more trouble. This is a very swanky neighborhood, I hope you know. How did Banks manage to get this place? Banks has his ways, but I didn't think to ask. Navy parked the car, and holding hands, they made their way to the front door. He keyed in the code for the door, and it immediately clicked open like something out of a sci-fi movie. The security alarm blared at them until Navy turned it off with the passcode. It took some doing and a bit of swearing, but he managed to change the code to the alarm like Banks told him to. While he worked on that, Karina made a round of the house. Someone definitely lives here, she called out to him. The fridge and pantry are fully stocked. There are family pictures everywhere. Seriously, how did your brother get this place? It might be a business associate who received a free family vacation for their troubles. 
Huh. You weren't kidding when you said shifters take care of their own. I really wasn't. Navy walked the perimeter of the house a few times, checking all windows and doors. He was in his third or fourth round when the doorbell rang. He ran to the living room and pointed to the pantry with a finger over his mouth. Karina shook her head, so he dragged her to the kitchen, took a large knife from one of the drawers, and opened the pantry door, motioning for her to hide with her new weapon. Exasperated and desperate to see if it was Agent Porath at the door, he silently pleaded with her to comply. She finally relented when whoever was at the door began to bang loudly. Navy pulled out his phone and dialed the number he had for Agent Porath. Are you going to let me in or not? She barked into the phone. He breathed a sigh of relief and rushed to unlock the door. I just wanted to make sure it was you, he said, letting her and two agents in. Is this all the staff you brought? He asked, trying not to sound too disappointed. She barked out a laugh. That you can see, yes. But make no mistake, we take this very seriously. We've got a missing couple, a destroyed condo, and a whole mess of stuff. Where's Miss Sai? Here, came the reply. As one, they turned to face the voice. Karina stood with a huge knife in her hand, only noticing after a few moments what she held. She giggled nervously and went to the kitchen to place it back on the counter. Sorry about that. Forgot I was holding that. I'm a little jumpy. I would seriously question your sanity if you weren't, Agent Porath said. Let's talk. Without waiting for an invitation, the Interpool agent sat in the living room with her legs and arms crossed. So, while we were in the sky, we did a lot of research. I hate wasting time, especially in these shifter cases. You guys really like to escalate shit fast. I can't argue with that, Navy shrugged. Right. So we dug deep on that off-the-books loan. Looks like it did come from a cash-only source. We weren't able to track it. It's been too long. All of the Psy business financials are on the up and up. I told you, Karina sang. Don't celebrate too soon. That's not where we found anomalies. Your parents' bank accounts had a whole other story to tell. There have been some large cash withdrawals lately. Karina frowned. Well, I guess Dad has been getting ready for retirement. You misunderstand. The agent shook her head. Your parents liquidated all of their assets. They have nothing left. The only thing they do have is the business, which is now to be tied to Amana Industries. There is also an account under your name, Miss Sai. It holds over two million dollars. Karina gasped before clapping a hand over her mouth. I don't have two million dollars. I know. It looks like your dad, or someone, has been steadily funneling money out of the business accounts into one under your name. Is that... She gulped. Is that even legal? No, Agent Porath responded. He used offshore accounts and shell corporations to do it. It took a lot of digging and some grade A hacking to find that out, but if you repeat that to my superiors, I'll deny it. Fair enough, Karina answered as pale as a ghost. Will that leave Karina open for prosecution? Yes, a few years in prison, Max, Porath replied. Navy was going to be sick. Defense could use that against her, saying that's how she could afford her condo. Those properties cost a cool mill each. We'd need to contact Elliot Jones about that. He helped me with down payment, Karina said. Why would that matter? The agent stared at her a moment. Mr. Jones owns your condo complex. Did you know that? It's how you were able to afford the place. If Karina was pale before, she was close to passing out. Uncle Elliot owns the condo complex? Wait, did you say my condo is worth a million dollars? I had an inspection done. I had it appraised. It was half that. Because mine is so much smaller than the other... She dropped off, seeing poor Ath's expression. It's not smaller, is it? The agent shook her head. If that condo complex was a hotel, you'd be in the penthouse suite. Karina dropped her head in her hands. Is my whole life a lie? I don't know. But I can tell you that your uncle is into some shady shit. It's been getting increasingly worse in the last few years. I reached out to the local PD. There's a problem in Jones's house. 
Apparently, one of his sons is vying for the throne and causing all kinds of trouble. One of the sons from his marriage, I should say. Agent Porath shook her head. That man has more kids by more women than I've seen in a long time. Probably ever. The one that seems to be the more likely suspect, based on all of our research, is Marvin. Morgan? That's the one. But Morgan is a sweetie. He wouldn't... She stopped again. How about I shut up and let you talk? Apparently I don't know anyone or anything. Navy reached out and took her hand. It's okay, love. It's obvious that you were being kept out of the loop on a lot of stuff. Probably by design. What he said. My guess is that Morgan Jones has your parents. We checked the security footage from the marina. Your parents talked to the harbor master, but before they could get on the boat, they were taken. Karina gasped. Are they okay? I couldn't tell you. They were grabbed by four big guys wearing head coverings. There was also a very large cat. Looked like a leopard in the footage. A very well-trained leopard. A shifter, Navy said, squeezing his mate's hand. Just that. You shifters have given me a raise. I've never been this busy. At least it keeps my job interesting. Okay, so what does this all mean? What do we do? Agent Porath leaned back in her seat. It means we need to talk to Elliot Jones. See what's happened in his corporation lately. Unless you're aware of other leopard shifters in the area? Navy clenched his jaw. I wish I knew more. Then we would have more information. I feel so fucking useless. Easy now. You sound like a kid right out of the academy. Cool your jets. You need recon before you jump into any situation. You have some of the information now, at least as much as you'll get with my help. From this point on, I can't do anything. What? Karina shouted. Navy wasn't surprised. Nothing that's been done is within your jurisdiction. Not concretely, anyway. You can't move on any of this. If, however, I were to meet with Elliot Jones and discover some stuff and report back to you, then maybe you could step in. Or if you were under attack, then fuck jurisdiction, Agent Porath said with a grim smile. I was able to come only because your brother talked to the right people and greased the right palms. So what does this mean? Karina was on the verge of tears. We waited for you to get here for what? Nothing. She closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Sorry, not nothing. You did give me a lot of information about my own life. It's not your fault. I don't like any of it. I understand how complicated things can get when shifters are involved. Karina squeezed his hand. So what does it mean for us? It means we have backup, Navy answered. Basically, what our friendly agent just told us is that we can meet your uncle. They'll be close by if things go sideways. I have the backup I need to take care of this for you. She nodded, but he could tell she didn't look convinced. Karina, love, look at me. She did, and he hated to see her whole life crumble just as his started to make sense. He had to make all of this right to make sure that when, because it would happen, they became mates, she had no doubts about him or the life he could give her, about the life she could have for herself. This isn't how every shifter family runs their business, he said. Until we talk to your uncle, we won't know for sure what's happened. Sounds to me like this Morgan character could have a bigger hand in this than Elliot. But at least for now, we know that your parents are alive. We need to focus on that to get them back, okay? Right. But I swear to God, if Morgan or anyone else harms my parents... Easy, Agent Porath interrupted. I don't want to be privy to any potential plans to harm a living being. That muddies the waters like you wouldn't believe. She winked. There are weapons galore in our car though I suspect you have all the ammo you need. I prefer my shifter to human weapons, if that's what you mean, he replied. I'll take a gun, Karina said. Absolutely not, Navy spoke at the same time as Agent Porath, who asked, Do you have a permit? She didn't, thank heaven. If things got hairy, Navy didn't want Karina anywhere near the fighting. What's our next step, then? his mate asked. I could call Uncle Elliot, set up a meeting. I guess I should mention his house isn't too far from here. 
You don't say, Agent Porath shot with a grin. Oh, right. That's why Banks chose this house for our little get-together, isn't it? Yes, Navy answered. It appears my older brother is quite the strategic general. He reminds me of someone, Porath said. A dragon shifter I dealt with a little while ago. Karina balked. Dragons are real? I nearly shit myself the first time I saw it. The agent laughed. It's crazy what's in the world. Okay, well, let's hope whoever is working with my parents' kidnappers aren't dragons. I don't know if I could deal with that. Karina was joking, but Navy rolled his shoulders back. His own crazy theory didn't seem so crazy after all. If he was right, they were in for a hell of a fight. Chapter 19 Karina Karina was surprised, really. She shouldn't have been, but she was. Apparently, she would just have to get used to the idea of being surprised at every turn. Navy drove them to Uncle Elliot's place, with Agent Porath and her team following. No matter how many times Karina looked back to spot the black SUV to count how many agents were there, she couldn't actually tell. Yay, more surprises for later. The last two days were a lot to take in and Karina didn't know just how much she could take. If they arrived at her uncle's place only to learn that he was responsible for a whole bunch of stuff, like her parents' disappearance, she would lose all her faith in humanity. I can feel you thinking, love. It's going to be all right. As he spoke, Navy brought her hand up to his mouth and gave it a sweet kiss. It melted her heart. Thanks for saying that, she whispered, looking out of the window. I mean it, though. No matter what happens, you'll get through it. I'll be right by your side every step of the way. You only need to tell me to back off or tell me what you need help with. I'll always be there to help you carry your troubles. Even if we are never properly mated? She didn't know why she was adding that question, but she felt she had to. It was hardly the time to question their relationship, especially with everything else going on. But she couldn't help it. Her brain was in full spiral mode, and apparently that included having some major panic about Navy. She didn't know how it had happened, but somehow, in the very short time they spent together, Karina knew that if she were to lose Navy, if he somehow disappeared out of her life, she would be devastated. She needed the reassurance that even if they were never going to go into the fated mate thing, they would still be linked. Even then, love, Navy assured her, I'm not sticking around only because my wolf senses tell me you smell great. I'm here because I care about you a great deal. You are part of me now, Karina, and I will help you get through this. If in a few weeks you decide we should be mated, then we'll get to it. If you never get to that place, it's okay too. He swallowed hard. She wanted to believe him. No, she did believe him. Somehow, that was the scary part. That she didn't doubt him. When she said as much, he shook his head, not understanding her meaning. I am having doubts because I don't have doubts. Like, shouldn't I have some kind of concerns? Something along the lines of, I just met this man. Maybe I shouldn't be falling head over heels in love with him so soon. He chuckled. Well, perhaps. I can't speak about your experience with this. As a shifter, I just know. There isn't really any room for doubts. Not with how I feel about you. About us? Oh. Oh, damn. That was something. Romantic and a little bit dizzying. I guess I shouldn't even be feeling like this. I should be way more focused on my parents. On all of this. I don't actually know how to react if it turns out Uncle Elliot is involved. 
You don't need to know how you'll react ahead of time, Karina. Whatever happens will happen, and you will deal and cope as you've done with everything else in your life. You mean by panicking the fuck out? No, he said with so much conviction she did a double take. I mean with grace and with an eye toward the future. Don't forget, love. I know that you've built your whole life to fulfill your father's aspirations for the business. I know you put your own wishes and dreams on the back burner to be the daughter you think you need to be. That tells me a few things about your character, but most importantly, it speaks to your strength. Perhaps after this is all done, you can take a moment and reevaluate how you really want to live your life. How do you want to live your life, Navy Amana? Because you say you don't like confrontation and you do things for your family so as to not rock the boat. But ever since you walked into my life, you've helped me face many things. And there have been confrontations. What do you want? Really? He seemed to consider her question for only a moment. I want to open a bookstore. Something like what Mrs. Miller has. I want to run it with my wife and go on collecting books and good memories. I want to build something that is entirely our own. Not because of last names and family obligations, but something that really connects me to the kind of man I am. Karina blinked at him. You want to open a bookstore? In New York? I'd be open to another location should the right offer come my way. Once again, Navy brought her hand to his lips and kissed it gently. The man who loved New York City. The man who wanted nothing to do with his family business, but was so damn proud of his pack that he did what he needed to do despite his level of comfort. Was actually offering to leave his family behind. To leave his pack behind. Karina might not know much about wolves and shifters, but she thought that sounded like quite the sacrifice, and there was just no way she was going to let that happen. In the back of her head, a plan began to form. Something wonderful and scary and a little bit over the top. It was the kind of idea people have just before everything changes forever in that way that life has of sneaking up on you. The thought popped in, made her smile, and then it was gone as soon as she lifted her head to see her uncle's place up the way. The security gate was wide open, letting them in without any sort of security check. Well, I guess that answers that question. Karina sat up in her seat and clutched Navy's leg. Something is wrong. What? How could you know? He asked, immediately going into protector mode. The gates... They're never opened. They're kept closed. You have to be buzzed in. She grabbed her phone and clicked on her uncle's number. Karina, no. Stop. I have to check something, she said over the ringing tone in her ear. Uncle Elliot didn't pick up. The phone just kept on ringing until she got to his voicemail. She turned back, knowing she wouldn't see the agents. They were staying a bit of a way farther up the road. The legality of it was a little bit confusing to her. Shouldn't they just descend on whoever they thought was responsible, laws be damned? You know, that whole thing about asking questions after? Her impatience and nerves made her skin twitch. I have a very bad feeling. Porath should have come with us. Navy nodded, but he didn't seem to agree. The house, which really was more like a mansion, sat on a massive piece of land surrounded by a large and lush forest. Karina had always thought it was strange that her city slicker uncle liked his greenery this much, but now that she knew he was a shifter, his house made a lot more sense. Uncle Elliot probably just wanted a secluded spot where he and his kids could roam in their shifter shape. Boy, it would take some getting used to that idea. People morphing into animals? If she hadn't seen Navy shift right in front of her eyes, she wouldn't have believed it. 
It's going to be fine, he reassured her as he parked the car in the looped driveway of the massive mansion. Really, it was a testament to her uncle's success. The sheer opulence had always seemed over the top, but now that she knew it was possibly begotten in an illegal way, she saw it in a different light. This is not the kind of life I want. Navy had the right of it. A bookstore and a good spouse with all the books she could ever want to read was the way to live. Not this. Not if it brought nothing but danger and intrigue. Those things were all fine and good in a book where you could turn the page or close it if things got too intense. You couldn't do that in real life. You had to push on, get through it, and hope that the next event didn't make things worse. You can do anything, Karina. You can survive anything. Okay, well, maybe more like almost everything. Just don't die. I can manage that. She repeated the words to herself as she and Navy made their way to the front door. Her phone was clutched in her hand, ready to dial Agent Porath at a moment's notice. It was little comfort, but it was something. Oh, and you do have a wolf soulmate beside you? This is super fine. Just a little visit to the Godfather's house. Everything is just peachy. Navy rang the bell and they waited for the door to be answered. It took a beat too long. It swung open, making Karina gasp. The person standing there was not her uncle. No, it was probably the most unexpected person. Casey? Karina blinked at her executive assistant. What? How? Casey grinned wide suddenly not seeming so sweet and kind. Not the kind of woman who had her back. At all. In fact, Mackenzie's words rang out in her ears. Karina had made a grievous mistake trusting this woman. Chapter 20 Navy Navy was confused, but only for a second. Casey, the overly eager executive assistant from Karina's office, stood in the doorway of Elliot Jones's home, looking every bit like the cat that ate the canary. And Cat was right. Now that he wasn't distracted by thoughts of Karina and her intoxicating jasmine scent, he could smell Casey. She was a leopard. Navy wanted to kick himself for not noticing earlier. Casey, as a shifter, would have known the Amana representative would be a shifter. No doubt she had drenched herself in her boss's perfume to mask her own identity as a shifter. It also explained why Casey had been lugging around that massive bouquet of flowers to and from the conference room. Really, it was the only logical explanation, but Navy still wanted to kick himself for missing such a crucial part of all of this. If he had caught on quicker, all this pain Karina was feeling would have been avoided. He held his part of the blame in all of this, and he would find a way to make it right. Casey didn't smell like Jasmine anymore. She didn't need the disguise. The gig was up. Come on in, she said without moving aside. Not that they were in any rush to be behind a closed door with their foe. Took you long enough to get here. She shook her head. A little slow on the uptake, huh? Aw, isn't that too bad? Not as smart as they all think you are, huh? Karina wanted to call in Agent Porath right fucking then, but Navy took her hand in his, giving her strength. Where are my parents? Where's my uncle? Navy took a step forward, adding a bit of distance between his mate and Casey. His instinct screamed at him that this was about to go sideways real fast. Call off the cops you brought with you, and I'll tell you. We don't have any police with us, Karina lied. Casey arched a brow up at Navy. You want to tell her that shifters can sense lies, or shall I? What are you doing, Casey? Actually, my name is Bailey. She winked. Casey doesn't exist. She rolled her eyes. That's not true. She's a real person, 
but I stole her identity a long time ago, around the same time as you hired me to be your assistant. She giggled gleefully, and Navy worried the woman was off, dangerous in her recklessness. But anyway, you don't get any answers until you call off the guards. She beamed, but Navy really wanted to point out that she'd sort of already given them a few clues. The police won't come unless we call them, Karina admitted. Navy would have preferred not sharing that tidbit with the leopard woman, but it was too late now. Casey, or Bailey, rather, knew where they stood in this whole business. That was to say, alone, and with backup that would only come if they were called in. It's really sweet how trusting you are in all this. Bailey inclined her head. Come in. No, Navy said, fully stepping in front of Karina now and pushing her behind him, completely shielding her from Casey. Any business we need to conduct can be done right here. I assume you have Mr. and Mrs. Sy in there, as well as Elliot Jones. Will you let them go? Navy knew the woman wasn't going to agree. Her motivation was still unclear. It felt like a big joke. First, he had suspected Karina's parents, then her uncle, and after their briefing with Agent Porath, he had even begun to suspect this cousin Morgan. Bailey's hand in this was... surprising. The tick of claws on stone made him turn. Coming up the drive, through the thick forest, was a male lion. Its mane moved in the wind as it growled its way toward them. Navy took Karina by the waist and kept her close to him. Anyone else here we need to expect? Bailey shrugged. I won't tell, for obvious reasons. I'm not dumb. Why are you doing this? Karina asked, choked up with emotion. I've been a good boss to you. Bailey growled. Because I'm Elliot's daughter. I should be the one who had his attention. He went to your graduations, helped pay for your condo. He never did any of that for me. Karina frowned. I doubt that's true. He treats all his kids the same. But you're not his, Bailey shouted. I didn't find out about him until my human mother tried to have me committed when I told her I could shift into a leopard. She thought I was losing my mind. Elliot really should be more careful as to who he fucks, leaving all kinds of kids spread out over the country, not caring that they grow up not knowing they belong to an elite group of people. Her laugh was heavy, changed from earlier. Can you even imagine how it felt? To find out I was Elliot fucking Jones's daughter? That I had to scrimp by my whole life? And there you were, a niece, not even related by blood, and he was always there for you. You don't need him. You have parents and money, but no, it's not good enough for you. You want it all without thinking about anyone else. So ungrateful, too. Wanting to work in a fucking bookshop instead? I'd kill to have what you do. What's your play here, Bailey? You'll kill Karina and hope that what? Your dad will forgive you? He might not. But at least I won't have to go on living knowing my father loves his fake niece more than he loves me. Navy sighed. But at least now, all of this was starting to make sense. The pieces of the puzzle never did fit but it was because he hadn't thought to consider that Karina was the centerpiece. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about revenge or pack properties. It was always about hurting Karina, removing her from the equations entirely. The woman was unhinged. Let me guess, Navy said. So long as he kept her talking, they were safe. He couldn't fight off a leopard and a lion, all the while defending Karina and whoever else was locked in the mansion. He could only hope that the Sighs and Jones were safe, wherever they were. You got a job as Karina's assistant to sabotage her life. It's way more than that. My boyfriend Mason has all the connections. His dad? He's a loan shark. He fronted Jonathan Sigh for the money a long time ago. Daddy Elliot paid off that debt, if you can believe it. He didn't want his best friend tied up with lions. She motioned to the lion, who was now only a few feet away. Can you believe how lucky I was to find out my mate was so closely linked to my arch nemesis? We are not enemies, Karina tried. But we are. You made sure of that. Karina's eyes popped wide. It was no use telling Bailey that his mate had done no such thing. 
She was merely a girl born to a family that happened to be close to Elliot Jones. It wasn't out of the norm for best friends to be called uncle and aunt. Hell, it wasn't even strange for uncles and aunts to help their godchildren in life. That's why they were picked, wasn't it? This was lost on Bailey. When Jonathan Sy started talking about finding a larger company to buy him out of business, I saw how hurt you were. Poor little rich girl, not getting everything she wanted, but still complaining. But it was weird. Seeing you sad made me happy. Really happy. I just knew I had to make you even sadder. She crossed her arms over her chest, cocking her hip. I figured if I killed your parents, you'd be even more devastated. Somehow they managed to fucking live. Tiny little humans survived the boat crash. I couldn't fucking believe it. It was fine, though. Mason and I hatched another plan. We figured we'd ransom your parents for money. With the company under Amana Industries, I knew you'd be rolling in cash. I get all your emails. I know. It's actually how I was able to funnel all of the money from your parents' account to yours. And just how were you going to get that money? Navy asked. Duh. I just said I have all the passwords. I funneled it all through some shell corporations with a little help from a sibling. I was going to do the same after you were out of the picture, Karina. Bailey's eyes were wild. But then, she shook her head. You came in on the day of my victory, and you ruined my life. Again. I could smell the wolf on you the second you walked into the door the morning of the merger. It nearly ruined everything. I figured you were mates with the Amana rep. What were the chances, really, that you'd meet a wolf? Bailey shrugged, but her gaze was still unhinged. I'm right, judging by his whole protective stance. Cute. She didn't mean it. Her leer was murderous. Maybe you'll get lucky enough to get a second mate. One who isn't a vulnerable and very breakable human. Still not sure how you mean to play this right now. She grinned. Of course you don't, you simple man. It's pretty fucking simple. Pay attention. Without warning, Bailey exploded into her leopard, pouncing for Karina behind him. Navy pushed his mate to his other side and around toward the front door, shouting, Go! Call Porath! He shifted into his wolf, blocking the home's entrance as his mate slammed the door closed and locked it. He swiped at the big cat as soon as his shift was complete. Thankfully, the blow landed, but not before Bailey landed on top of him, her jowl closing around his neck. He kicked at her with his hind paws, feeling the slice of flesh. She howled in pain, letting go of him. She rolled away, licking at her wounds, but there would be no reprieve. The boyfriend, the lion, joined the fight. Mason swiped at his back, but Navy got away barely in time, not getting a scratch on him. He faced off the two felines, hunched down low and ready to pounce. The mated big cats lunged for him at the same time, leaving Navy with a split-second decision. If he managed to indispose Bailey, perhaps the boyfriend would back off. It was difficult to understand why anyone, even a mate, would go along with this sort of plan. Navy hopped out of the attack, doubling back to lunge at Bailey from the back. Taken by surprise, she didn't see the blow coming. He hit her hard with his claw-tipped paw, sending her backward and crashing into the rental car, her head smashing through the window. He hoped Banks got the insurance on it. Bailey stayed down, knocked out from the blow. The lion roared, jumping up on his hind legs and swiped at him with both front paws. A few of the hits landed, but Navy didn't relent. He defended himself, hoping that Karina had found her family and called Porath. He didn't have much time to think. Bleeding profusely from a head wound, Bailey was coming in hot, apparently not injured as badly as he thought. Once again, Navy found himself fighting two opponents. It reminded him of his fights with Banks and Ivor teaming up against him. In the end, having a big, loud, obnoxious family might save him. He lunged into the fight once again, more confident than ever. Chapter 21 Karina Karina ran. 
ran like she had never run before. Her legs hurt as she went from room to room, looking for her uncle and parents. Agent Porath and her team should be on their way now. She hated to leave Navy alone with two shifters, but what could she do? Tell them to sit? Play dead? She would get herself killed. From everywhere in the house, she could hear the roars of the fight outside. She sent out a prayer, hoping it was protection enough to bring Navy back to her. Could this house be any fucking bigger? She shouted in anger as she made her way down yet another set of stairs. She rounded the corner of the curved flight and spotted a series of closed doors. The first turned out to be a linen closet. The next was the laundry room. The third was used to store all kinds of non-useful junk. The fourth door she tried was it. Mom, Dad, Uncle Elliot, and Aunt Perdita were all tied to chairs, bound and gagged. It figured Bailey would lock them away in the home studio her uncle had built for one of her cousins, who was sure he was going to be the next big pop sensation. Poor Morgan. All of this had almost been blamed on him. A series of gunshots made Karina scream and jump. She rushed to her father and removed his gag. Sweetie, what the hell is going on? No time to explain, she answered, tugging at the ties of his hands behind his back. Untie your legs, then take care of Mom. She moved to Uncle Elliot. She nearly took off his thick black mustache when she ripped the tape from his mouth. He groaned in pain, but the binds at his legs and hands were a little bit more complicated. Bailey didn't use rope as she had for Mom and Dad. A thick link chain was used. She has the key. Uncle Elliot explained. Well, considering Bailey is currently fighting my mate along with her boyfriend, I can't exactly go ask her for it, can I? Uncle Elliot apologized. I can't believe she did this. She drugged us. Can you believe it? My own daughter. Aunt Perdita, who was also chained to her seat, sobbed. This is unbelievable. Did she hurt anyone? Apart from you four? Not yet. She just tried to kill me. Just? Mom cried, tears spilling. Baby girl, are you okay? You have a mate? Dad asked, rubbing his wrists. An actual mate? There's time for that later. Uncle Elliot, do you have any weapons? Something I could use to fight Bailey? Like hell, Dad roared. Uncle Elliot growled. If you have a mate, he can handle himself. Besides, I heard gunshots. That would be Interpol. Uncle Elliot blanched. Interpol? Shell companies? What the hell are you involved in? Karina shook her head. Never mind, I don't have time for this. Karina ran back up the stairs, retracing her steps outside. It was quiet. Too quiet. There was no longer the sound of wild animals fighting, and she didn't know what that meant for Navy. She pushed on, gasping for breath. She unlocked and threw open the front door, but couldn't make out who had been shot until she stepped outside. Her eyes quickly scanned the devastation. There was blood. Everywhere. She gasped, trying to see her wolf or her man. Bailey's leopard laid on her side, bleeding from a few wounds in her stomach. The lion fared just as poorly. But the wolf, that beautiful, thick black fur was matted over with blood. It was impossible to tell how much of it was from Navy and how much of it was from the fight. She ran to his side, skidding on the driveway. Karina ran her hands through the fur, looking for wounds. Navy didn't move. Navy Amana, I swear to God, if you don't open your eyes right fucking now. She held her breath and waited. Nothing. Oh my God, Navy. Karina's voice broke into a sob. Her hands were covered in blood, making her shiver. You can't die. It won't, 
Agent Porath said from a distance. Shifters are mortal, but it takes more than our bullets to kill them. She motioned toward Bailey and Mason. Even those two will be okay, which suits me just fine. They'll face justice for what they've done. How do I get him to wake up? She didn't really care about Bailey or her boyfriend for now. Her family was relatively safe, but Navy worried her. You don't. When his body is healed enough, he'll come too. It shouldn't be too long. A day at the very most. We're gonna go on ahead and grab these two. Take them to a secure facility. As if on cue, a helicopter appeared in the distance, its long blades beating the air as it made its way toward them. Maybe search her pile of clothes for a key? My uncle and aunt are still chained up in the basement. Karina didn't see if Agent Porath listened to her. Under her hands, the wolf began to stir. Navy opened his eyes, sniffing at the air. Don't move, she whispered to him. Apparently you'll be fine, but I have no experience with shifters, so what the hell do I even do? She placed his massive wolf head on her lap and petted him. Navy closed his eyes and made a strange sort of appreciative sound. I'm going to take that noise as shifter speak for thanks. I'm also going to choose to believe that having your mate close is good for your recovery. If it's not true, don't tell me, okay? He groaned and huffed out a breath. Karina sat there, holding her mate through his healing for a long time. She would have waited decades if she needed to. Thankfully, it was only two hours before she laid eyes on Navy's handsome face again. Kissing your very naked and blood-covered boyfriend was hardly how you wanted to be spotted for the first time by your parents. But that's exactly what ended up happening. As Karina held Navy through his healing, Agent Porath and her people debriefed her family, as soon as it was confirmed they hadn't done anything illegal, they were released. Just in time to see Karina and Navy making out on the driveway. Dad cleared his throat. Any chance you could put some clothes on before we're officially introduced? Navy blushed. I'm so sorry, Mr. Sai. This is hardly respectful and hardly how I wanted to meet you for the first time. You can shower in one of the bedrooms, Aunt Perdita said. I'll get you a change of clothes. Good. Then we can all have some coffee and discuss just what the hell is wrong with your family. Agent Porath didn't wait for an invitation, but made her way into the house. Come with me, Karina said, dragging Navy away, using her body to shield his naked form from everyone. She took him up the stairs to the guest bedroom she used when she visited for an extended stay. The bedroom had its own bathroom, which was all too convenient. She helped Navy gather what he needed to make himself presentable and waited on the bed while her mate, boyfriend, whatever he was, showered off from the bloody battle. A battle he had fought for her. If her parents weren't under the same roof, she would have hopped in the shower with him and thanked him properly. That would have to wait. There would be time. Well, Navy said after a long, hot shower. That was definitely not how I wanted to meet your parents. I can't think I made too good an impression, to be honest. Karina rolled her eyes. You saved their lives. Everything is fine. Are you ready? In a second. Navy pulled her to her feet only to wrap her up in his arms. I didn't want to hold you when I was covered in blood. You're okay? I'm fine. I'm not the one who fought off two huge cats. Karina, tell me you're okay. I'm really fine, Navy. I promise. He trailed his lips along her neck before capturing her lips in a kiss. I'm so happy you're okay, love. I was so scared you'd be hurt, that there would be more people in the house who could hurt you. I'm not a great strategist. I could have handled it better. How? she asked in genuine shock. 
I should have known your assistant was a shifter. Again? How? The day you saw her, she was wearing my clothes. She explained the spilled coffee incident that led Bailey to borrow her dress. She probably did it on purpose, knowing you were a shifter and would smell her or whatever it is you guys do to recognize each other. And she had those flowers. You know, the card was addressed to Bay. I thought it was a nickname thing. Nope, just her real name. Even my best friend Mackenzie had bad vibes about her. I should have been the one to know she was bad news. I guess it's over now, so we don't have to worry too much about what we should have done better. Exactly. But it's not over yet. We still need to talk to Agent Porath. Then there's the whole merger thing. Is your brother still going to be interested in merging? I'm sure. Not that I'll give Banks much of a choice. This is about family now. She blushed, hard and everywhere. Mates means family? He brushed a sweet kiss against her lips. What else could it mean, love? Are you two about ready? Agent Porath's voice shouted from below. Karina giggled. I think they were waiting for the water to stop running to bug us. The sooner we get this done, the sooner we can make... Navy took her in his arms and ran down the stairs, gently placing her down once they were in the living room where the others were gathered. Mom shot her a wink, but Dad frowned. Typical father reaction. He'd soon learn that Navy was nothing like her college boyfriend. Agent Porath sipped from a huge cup of coffee and began her long explanation. Karina learned a lot about her uncle's empire. Maybe too much. He towed the line between legal and almost illegal way too often for her comfort. They would be having a goddaughter-godfather chat about that soon enough. As it turned out, according to the Interpol agent's information, Morgan wasn't a sweetheart. He helped Bailey embezzle money from their father and Psy Financial, all the while feeding Bailey information with the promise that he would rule over the hotel empire once his dad was out of the way. It was shocking news. Morgan would be going to the same shifter prison as Bailey and Mason for the financial crimes he had committed. There went his pop star career. After all was said and done and Agent Porath left with her team, Dad announced he was even more looking forward to the merger. Retirement is calling. Well, about that, Karina said. How upset would you be if I didn't keep my job with Psy Financial? Dad sighed, heavy and deep. You want to open a bookstore like the Millers, don't you? Yep. But she won't be alone in her endeavor, Mr. Psy. She'll be in good company. Navy took her hand and gave it a good squeeze before kissing her cheek. I've got plans for us, but if it's all the same to you, I'd rather discuss them with my lady before I reveal everything. Because I might have my own ideas, Karina cut in, making Navy chuckle. Exactly, because you might have your own view, though I suspect we have similar ideas. He kissed her cheek again, leaving no doubt in her, or anyone's, mind that Navy was into her. Really into her. Well, I think I've had enough of being around people for a long time, Mom declared. I'm gonna need about two weeks in a private secluded resort with, at the very least, four suitcases full of books. Dad pulled out his phone. On it. Booking flights now. Navy grinned at her and leaned down to whisper in her ear. If your parents are going to the Caribbean, we go to South America. Though, maybe three weeks would be better. Karina thought he was joking, but of course he wasn't. Two days later, she was lying on the deck of their own island resort. Just the two of them but Karina only brought one suitcase of books. After all, 
she had other things to do. Chapter 22 Karina It would only make sense that after three weeks alone on their own deserted island, Karina would get sick or even annoyed with Navy Amana. But life didn't always make sense. After twenty days alone in the sun, swimming in crisp, clear blue water, eating fresh tropical fruit, oh, and making love, having sex, and whatever else you wanted to call it, in every single position and on every surface they could think of, one thing was absolutely clear. They were definitely meant to be together. Like the song said, forever and ever, amen. Though the amen part would have to wait. They were already talking about marriage and babies, but the stubborn wolf had yet to mate her officially. Which was kind of the whole point, wasn't it? It was literally the only argument they had. What to have for dinner? No disagreement. When to go to bed? They got naked at the same time. Which books to buy? Their lists were freakishly the same. Hell, even their coming was synchronized. Living together is different away from the holiday home, love. We're in paradise. We're drunk on each other and drunk on the holiday. Let's wait until we get back to our real life. If you still want to be my mate, then I'll be the first to initiate it. Proving his words, he wrapped his arms around her waist from behind, swaying them to the gentle warm breeze. All in good time. He let go of her and stretched out on a chair, naked as the day he was born, because really, who needs tan lines? That's bullshit! We both know this is gonna happen, so why wait? Navy smiled wide at her, lounging naked in the shade of their cabana. I'm not telling. It's a secret. I could seduce you into biting me. She pushed her hair over her shoulder and tied it up in a messy bun on top of her head. Right here. She drew a circle right over her pulse as she straddled him on the lounge chair. She pushed her neck up to his mouth and reveled in the sound of his groan. I don't like begging, Navy Yamana. You haven't made me beg once, but I want this for us. What would be a better setting than the closest thing to paradise? He grinned, holding her close. Because as beautiful as all of this is, it's not paradise, Karina. You are paradise. The life we will build together is paradise. Tell me, she whispered before kissing his chest right over his heart. Well, I'll take you out to an amazing dinner at a romantic spot. Then I'll find a reason to take a walk around the neighborhood. Obviously, you'll complain about the heels which you insist on wearing. I'll coax you just a bit farther, and as we turn the corner of the street, you'll see it. A tiny shop with a beautiful display window on which is written the business name. Fate Bookshop. We'll walk in and explore the empty shelves and excitedly decide where to put the different sections. Romance at the very front, she murmured right next to the mysteries. He chuckled. Yes, that's what I thought too. We'll dream about opening day and inviting our friends and family. We'll even wonder if we should have local authors come and do readings. It's New York City. Every third person is writing the next great American novel. Then what would happen? Well, then I would take you up the stairs at the very back all the way up to the newly renovated space. It would have plenty of space for a growing family. A place above the shop? She blinked away happy tears. Like I would ever want to separate you from your books. That was lovely, Navy. Really. It's way more than I could have ever imagined. I want it all, exactly as you said. 
He laughed softly. Well, good, because the reason why this holiday is so long, I've hired a crew to reno a little place right in Manhattan for us. It's close enough to the private school where Jules sends her kids. It's walking distance to my parents. Karina sighed happily and lifted her head to look into his eyes. Navy Amana, I want you to mate me. Right here, right now. That way, when we get back home, to our home, we'll already be joined forever. I love that, Karina, but are you sure? This is forever. I've known I wanted forever with you the second I saw you drop those books in the bookstore. Karina ran her hand down between them until she could cup his cock. He was already erect and nude. So was she. There was really no reason to wear clothes out here in their own little space. Hold that thought, love. Navy had her in his arms in a single movement, and he was carrying her inside their cabana. He laid her naked body on the soft white comforter, looking at her with so much love it made her eyes water. She wiped away the tears, and Navy covered her with his body. What's wrong, Karina? Nothing. I'm literally crying for joy. This is the happiest I've ever been. I hope you're happy too, Navy, because I've never felt so much love before. I'm about to mate the woman of my dreams, Karina. I couldn't be happier. You know, before we met, I was dead set against mates and children. I even made a list of things my mate would need to have for me to say yes to forever. You have everything on that list and so much more. I'm happy as long as you're by my side. As he spoke, saying all kinds of happy things to her, he kissed his way down her body, taking licks and nips as he desired. The air around them charged with the animalistic and primal connection between them. He bent her legs, folding them onto the bed while he kissed her knee one at a time. He trailed the kisses up and down her legs in a slow, teasing dance that had her begging. And she didn't like begging. At least she knew that her man would never let her down. He would always take care of her needs. Always. She was safest when she was loved by Navy, and he would always love her. She could feel it. I'm going to love you forever, Karina, starting at this moment. He kissed the apex of her thighs before letting his tongue delve between her lips, tasting her cream. He licked again, slowly parting her folds with more and more pressure. He avoided her clit, drawing out the moment for as long as he could. When he finally grazed it with the tip of his tongue, Karina was halfway ready to go, to pitch far and deep into her climax. He continued twirling his tongue around the bundle of nerves before applying just the right amount of suction. He pumped one finger into her pussy, curling it to hit just the right spot as his tongue twirled, as his mouth sucked. It was a lot. It was so much. It was absolutely everything she needed. Karina screamed out Navy's name, her nails digging into his back, clawing him deep to leave her own mark on him. Waves of pleasure rolled over her again and again as Navy continued to make love to her core with his mouth. Navy, she panted. Come on, I want you inside me. He moved slowly from between her legs, taking his time to kiss up her body again. Karina had enough waiting. She slid down on the bed until her lips were level with his cock. He was hard and powerful, a real testament to manliness. She circled the head with her tongue before sliding down the length of it, sucking hard. Navy growled out her name, pumping his hips ever so slightly. He was losing control, 
going to that wild place where he made love to her, fucked her into oblivion. Karina, love, stop. If I'm going to mate you, this isn't how it's going to happen. She giggled as she pulled away from his dick and let him push her against the pillows. He was between her legs in seconds, pushing into her. In one solid thrust, he was deep inside. He moved out before surging back in. Over and over, he took her. It flared her pleasure to life in no time at all. He continued, moving in just the right way. Karina bit and licked his neck, bucking her hips into him. His hands were everywhere, on her hips in a hard grip, on her breasts tweaking her nipples, between them, twirling her clit with his fingers. Navy, she warned on the very edge of coming. It's time. Yes, love, it really is. He increased his tempo, moving like a man on a mission to make her his forever. He shouted out her name with one final thrust, then pushed into her as he filled her with his seed. His teeth sank into her neck, setting off her orgasm. Karina held on for dear life, clenching her pussy to keep him inside, pulsing and spilling. Their breath was heavy and labored, but they didn't move. Navy covered her with kisses. I am yours, Karina Sai. Yours forever. And you, my love, you are mine. So long as I get my bookstore, she said, teasing. I love you, Navy Amana. I love you too, Karina Amana. He kissed the tip of her nose. What do you think? You'll take the wolf name? I'll hyphenate it she said, kissing him right back. You know, to keep representation from the human side of the family. He grinned down at her. And the kids? The kids will be wolves, she sighed happily. Maybe I'll hyphen them too, the perfect little reading wolves. Maybe we should have a strict no-shift policy in the bookstore. I like that, mate of mine. Oh, Karina. Say that again. Mate, she whispered in his ear. And then, because they could, because they would always love each other, they made love again. Bonded forever as dusk fell over the clear water, promising a truly beautiful happily ever after. Epilogue Ivor. One year later. Ivor Amana took a deep pull from his glass of bourbon, drinking down every last drop. He immediately poured himself another and downed that one, too. If he wasn't a shifter, he would be feeling nice and drunk right about now. Sadly, as a wolf shifter, the booze wouldn't do anything to dull the anger bubbling inside. He needed to take the edge off. Now. He couldn't exactly leave the family gathering to find some willing hottie to screw, even though he knew the sweet release of sex would be the only thing that would make this whole thing better. At least, for a little while. He poured himself another drink, emptying the bottle of bourbon. You're out, he said over the overwhelming chatter of way too many people. His parents, his siblings, their mates, and children... Almost a year ago, to the day, his older brother Navy married his mate, Karina. Now, the entire Amana family was gathered to celebrate a baby shower. Karina was pregnant with her first kid with Navy, though some would say the bookstore they owned together was their first child. They lived there, only ever leaving to see family. It had put Ivor in an awkward spot. Now, Banks, as the head of the family and Amana Industries, was relying on him even more. He had to pick up the slack. Wasn't he the baby of the family? Shouldn't he be able to coast and barely get by with the bare minimum of effort? But no. His brothers had to go and get themselves mated with kids, leaving him to do work. A lot of work. 
and Ivor wasn't exactly known for his hard-working attitude. Unless it was club promoting or helping his friends open successful clubs, Ivor didn't do much. It would have been fine if Banks was open to the idea of letting that kind of establishment under the umbrella of Amana Industries. Banks was constantly on his case to do more, to step into the role he had been given. Meanwhile, no one batted an eye at the fact that Navy had chosen his own path. Meanwhile, Annika and Banks cooed like birds over their one-month-old daughter, Steffi. If Jewel and Takis announced they were pregnant for the fifth time, he would quit the family. The pack. Shit, he'd even change his name. Did you drink all of the bourbon? Jewel gasped, hitting his shoulder. What the hell is the matter with you? This is a baby shower, not one of your nightclubs. What the hell are you thinking? It's not like I can get drunk, he grumbled before eyeing the bottle of whiskey. Maybe if he emptied that one too, this afternoon wouldn't be so damn painful. You know, when Banks and Navy found their mates, I really thought it would be no time before you found your own mate. I'm so disappointed in fate for leaving you alone like this when we're all so happy. Mom! Emmy shouted up a storm. The lungs on that kid. Can I have my phone back now? Please? No, don't interrupt me. I'm talking about very important stuff with your uncle. Emmy rolled her eyes. Leave Uncle Ivor alone. He doesn't need a mate. He probably doesn't even have one. Emmy, Jewel gasped. That's a horrible thing to say. Apologize. No need. He gave his niece a wink. She's right. She wasn't. All for the best. It was. Let's go play a game of chess. The teen beamed at him as he offered not only a way out from the packed living room filled to the brim with siblings and family members, but also a form of entertainment that would cut the boredom while the teen didn't have her smartphone. This conversation isn't over, Ivor, Jewel growled at him as Emmy and he left the room for the peace and quiet of Dad's study. He and his niece settled on opposite sides of the small table where Dad kept his chessboard. Uncle Ivor, can I ask you a question? Promise you won't tell Mom? He leaned back in his seat. This was dangerous territory for the simple reason that Emmy was a bit of a troublemaker. She was a lot like him in that respect. If he made this promise, there was every chance she would ask him to help her hide a full-back tattoo from her parents. Sure. So long as it won't put me in trouble. Emmy snorted out a laugh. <laughs> no, you're an adult. You can't get in shit. He arched a brow at her. Sure I can. Don't swear. Ha, you cuss all the time and no one says anything. Besides, you're the one uncle who doesn't let me win when we play. She motioned to the board. I like that. You don't baby me. Ivor grinned. Kid, letting you win doesn't do you any favors. Just like being on your phone all the time doesn't help you any. What the hell is on there anyway? Emmy pulled out a device, a smartphone, from her back pocket. Please, I let Mom and Dad think they've confiscated my phone. This is the real one. The one she took is the one I accidentally dropped in the toilet. If Ivor knew Emmy, and he did, there was no accident about it. What's this about? His niece picked at a chess piece. So the reason I'm always on my phone is because I'm working on a business plan. Ivor blinked at the barely a teenage girl. He changed her diapers, fed her bottles, and now she was working on a business plan? What the hell? She was more business inclined than him. Oh? he asked. Interest peaked. Yeah, it's for a sports club. I want to open a facility in an underprivileged community. He blinked at her some more. Uh, a what now? Why? Emmy shook her head. Because every kid needs a good place to feel safe. Sports clubs are proven to decrease the levels of disenfranchised kids. My social studies teacher talks about it all the time. You go to one of the most prestigious and expensive private schools in the country. I know. She shrugged. That's why I need to help. I asked my teacher if I could do a business plan for extra credit. I want to petition the city council. Will you help me? Uh, sure thing, kid. How hard could it be? Emmy beamed at him. Cool. 
Can you meet Miss Duke and me after school on Monday? Sorry, who? My social studies teacher, Miss Jovi Duke. Shit. Fucking shit. Ivor knew that name. He knew the woman it belonged to. His mate. About the Author New York Times and USA Today best-selling author. Hi, I'm Millie Tatin. I love to write sexy stories featuring fun, sassy heroines with curves and growly alpha males with fur. My books are a great way to satisfy your craving for paranormal romance with action, humor, suspense, and happily ever afters. I live in Florida with my hubby, our son, and our fur babies, Speedy, Stormy, and Teddy. I have a serious addiction to chocolate and cake. I love to meet new readers, so come sign up for my newsletter and check out my Facebook page. We always have lots of fun stuff going on there. Sign up for Millie's newsletter for latest news. http colon slash slash eepurl dot com slash pt9q1. Find out more about Millie here. www.millietaden.com Millie at millietaden.com We hope you've enjoyed this production of Dusk Bitten, City Wolves Book Two by Millie Taden. Narrated for you by Elizabeth Russell and Nick J. Russo. This has been a Findaway Audio Works production presented by Orange Sky Audio. Copyright 2021 by Millie Taden. Published by arrangement with Stone Song. Production copyright 2022 by Orange Sky Audio. All rights reserved. Thank you for listening.